So this is the broadcast tool here, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see in all its glory. You can see the notation. You can also see the engine evaluation next to each move and also how long they spend. What I like is you can make your own moves on the board. You can check the alternatives to what the players did. And even for the moves you make, you get the computer evaluation here. Fantastic. Then you get it quicker and better as a premium member, such as yours truly. What I also like, there is a chat function. You can exchange things yeah. with people from all over the world. If you want to see something else, let's say you're watching a tournament and you want to see all the games at once, no problem displaying. I have no idea how many games there are, like 128 games at the same time. You can do even more. This is a team competition. You click on multi-board. That's beautiful. You can see all the eight games going on at once. You can see the games and standings, which I... What we got? I'll click around. Games and standings, here. Yeah. Analysis, if we click on that tab, that's Let's a nice click tab. on it. You can see that it's a great little graphical illustration. The red line is zero, that is the absolute even mark. And if the white bars are go up, the further up they go, the bigger the advantage. And the black bars show a black advantage. Then there is a database, and here we get the alternatives. And we, if we click on a move in the database, bam! Yeah. It gets played on the board. Fantastic. And then the PGN can even be downloaded. I like that feature. Yeah. Whatever tournament or game you're following, you click it and you open it in the program of your choice. Yeah, and one of the great things I like to see as well is when we get a video from the playing hall. I like to see them in their seats, nervous. You feel the tension, you feel like you're there, don't you? Chess is really becoming a spectator's internet sport. Great that we can see that. I also love to see um, the fact that we can get in some of our friends to join us during the broadcast. And it's all interactive, that's what we love. And a lot of overview functions there. A lot of great functions there, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you take advantage of all of them. Let's get back to the, uh, to the commentary. Keep tweeting us, Keep hashtag C24Live. We love to hear from you. Ask us anything about mainly about Lawrence Trent's life, but if you have other questions, they're also welcome. Also, send us anything you like about Jan. <laughs> Hashtag C24 Live. Absolutely. Uh, He loses another game, it would really uh, be a terrible for Magnus and still he takes the inner strength to, to avoid repetition of moves and play, continue the game with a move like Queen A1. It shows character, it shows uh, champion spirit. It shows tilt, <coughs> but he did make it work.
but I understand how frustrated Magnus should be because yeah, why on earth is this happening to him? He, it's not a usual scenario. Yeah, King G3 what? there. What? And the door made, is yeah. shut and it's checkmate next move. Yeah. yeah. But look completely hopeless, so <laughs> might as well end it. Yeah, congratulations for Duda, of course. It's a great win for him. Hello everybody and welcome to the last day of the qualification stage of the Lindoris Abbey Rapid Challenge, the second part of the Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour, an online super tournament featuring 12 of the world's best players and it's go time today. The first eight move on, the last four are leaving us today. It is an exciting day, almost everybody still very much has a chance to make it to the knockout stage. And I am thrilled to be back with the AB team. Peter Swidler is here, as is Lawrence Trent. And we will have an exciting day, guys. What are you looking forward to? Well, Elimination Day is, is always extremely, uh, extremely exciting. There is a lot uh, on the line uh, for pretty much everybody in the tournament. Uh, I, I've looked at the... Uh, I, Extreme professional that I am. I've actually looked at the cross table before, before wow. the start of the show. And uh, uh, a, a full point, but uh, just a point nonetheless, uh, divides uh, tie, p people tied for third with people tied for tenth, right? If I'm not, if I'm not entirely mistaken. Uh, a point with only four rounds to go is quite a lot. Uh, but generally, it's it's very very jam packed in the middle with uh, Wei Yi sort of out of the running really, and you assume uh, Hikaru and uh, Sergei uh, more or less assured qualification. But the, uh, the the two people who will not get into quarters are still you know the, the list of names is extremely long of people who could who could actually be in that category. So. Every round should be uh, should be very exciting from that point of view, and of course the usual, you know, great field. Every game has you know very rich promise, and we could have plenty. Should have plenty of excitement today. Lawrence, could you yeah. take time out of your busy schedule as a chess coach, as a social justice warrior, to be here with us today? Yeah, it's great to be back, and uh, as Peter said, it is jam packed in the middle. Magnus obviously wasn't really firing on all cylinders yesterday, so he actually has to put in the work to make sure he qualifies today. Um, he's playing uh, black against Karyakin in the first round, resurgent uh, Sergei Karyakin, who feels like for a long time now he hasn't performed or done anything of, um, you know, of the level that we know he's capable of. He's been out the limelight. But he's back, he's playing extremely well. And uh, he'll be thinking, wow, you know, he's got a chance against Magnus, who I don't know if Magnus is lacking inspiration or if Magnus is tired or what happened, but he needs to, uh, he needs to find his flair today. Otherwise, he's in serious danger of not making it. One or two mishaps like we saw yesterday and uh, stranger things have happened. But of course... Uh, He's still favorite naturally. So. Yeah, need, needing to come in at you know top eight, top top four, you you could definitely see him uh, being in a, no, in a dog fight to, to end top, in top eight. Four. He's only half a point clear of eight at the moment. If, you know, sure, but you you don't really you don't really see him have two really horrible days uh, in a row in uh, in shorter time controls. So uh, yeah, yesterday you know for firing on all cylinders, it looked like he kind of replaced the cylinders with a 
with a horse drawn buggy yesterday, but uh, <laughs> exactly. it's uh, he, he's not well known for having uh, for having those days uh, too often. So, uh, Why is he losing every black game? Like in, he's winning all the white games, but he's losing all the black games, and it's been like that for a while. What's going on there? It's a bit confusing, frankly, um, because. Like the game he lost against Duda in particular was a bit strange because uh, it was very much his choice to go for that structure. He it's a risky structure, but uh, Magnus plays a lot of uh, the English opening, I think, with both colors these days, uh, and uh, clearly could play something else if he didn't feel ready to play that particular position. And then he was seemingly close to lost by move twenty. Uh, and yeah, this is this is a diagram that will that will stay with us for a while. I'm very it's happy. A zebra. This up. Uh, it's a it's a zebra indeed, and you don't see you don't see this very often. This is this is really a one one for the fans of uh, weird geometrical patterns, uh, which are plentiful, I'm sure, in our audience today. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, it's becoming a bit of a, a bit of a talking point, honestly. Uh, his seeming inability to score any points with black. Don't really know what to what to suggest as a possible reason. Lawrence, um, you got any advice as a former mentor manager to world number two, Fabian Carana? What would you tell Galen Magnus? I wonder if Magnus is trying too hard. Actually, with black, just trying to get, try and win at not all costs, but just pushing a little, you know, maybe he needs to uh, play a bit more Wesley So esque, Sergei Kayakin esque, make a few draws. He's doing well with white. Don't push the boat out. Try and get through this qualification phase. And then when the time comes, when he actually needs to go for the jugular, he goes for it. So I think. That's my assumption. Of course, I could be completely wrong. Um, but, yeah, it's been very, very strange. I've been very impressed with Hikaru so far. I think he's been really excellent. Sergei as well, of course, has shown some really good form. Wesley So has not been bad. Levon and Alexander Grischuk have been a bit up and down, I have to say, uh, as has Yu Yang Yi and Siren. I mean, that queen blunder is just, for me... I've, I've never that seen. That was somewhat shocking. Yeah, let's yeah, I mean, that's put just... it up on the screen. So knight to f6, and he went rook takes d8. No doubt expecting rook takes d8, but knight takes e4 was a bit of an unpleasant surprise. Yeah, and so Ding not really, Ding, you know, with a few losses in there, you know, you losing as well against Yu Yang Yi. <clears throat> Yu Yang Yi's actually looked quite decent. He got off to a rotten start, but after his start, he's actually looked pretty good. So it wouldn't surprise me if Yu Yang Yi actually crept in. And then, of course, Duboff, Duda, and Ferruja. Ali Reza still not quite finding his rhythm at this time, Kondroy, it seems. Feels like he's still struggling. Um, but Duboff and Duda are still all with everything to play for, and these guys are so creative that. Um, it wouldn't surprise you if one of them actually made it through. And Duboff this round white against Ali Reza. This is a massive game for Daniel because, you know, he's got white. Um, he knows Ali Reza isn't really firing. If Daniel wins this one, he's right up in there. So I think... Who's your favorite among the dudes? Do you prefer Duboff or Duda? No, I'm a big Daniel. Both to qualify and as a person. No, I, I played Daniel Dubov in the Bundesliga uh, a few years back and lost in about 16 moves. Um, I actually played Peter in the Bundesliga and lost in a similar number of moves. But um, what I liked about Daniel was... Consistency, as they say, is the true... I just wanted to give you a compliment, Lawrence, but I, that involved interrupting. You timed so out there. Consistent, I'm, I didn't hear I'm very conflicted. Yeah, I wanted to say that consistency is a true is a true true you know show of mastery is in inconsistency. Right, exactly. You lo losing all I, these games in exactly the same fashion. 
No, D Daniel is, uh, is, is, a, is a very, uh, very affable chap. He was, he, after the game, he was very nice to analyze. And uh, he was even so nice recently when I played him in a uh, titled event online when I had a winning position to message me saying, how on earth could I screw that up, Lawrence? You bleep. Um, so <laughs> kind of guy I like, you know, he gives, you know, he beats from a losing position, gives me the needle and then wants to hang out. So I'm a big Daniel Dubois fan. Uh, I don't know Jan Christoff Duda that well. That's the truth. I've obviously seen him around, but Daniel is a cool dude. So I'd like to see Daniel get through, but uh, we'll see. Jan. Yeah, I was just going with awkward silence to see who Are breaks you, it first. You start off with the awkward silences. Okay. Um, should we do our? Uh, I have got the tally of our predictions so far. Do you want to know the scores on the doors? Mm, it sounds like you're leading, so no. No, I'm not. I'm in last position. Okay, um, then let's hear it. Unless you, Peter is leading. You, 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 and Peter have got six right, and I've got five. So we're. That's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. True. Mm. Okay, so round nine. Let's go through the pairings. Uh, All right. Let's start. Dubov Ferruja. Peter Svidler. I'll take Daniel. Daniel, 1-0. Okay. Jan. Do you say Daniel or 1-0? <laughs> they are the same thing in, in this particular instance, which is gratifying. Fair enough. Yeah, I like 1 0 there. Me too. I think we're going for a Daniel win. Duda versus Ding. Draw. Draw? Okay. And? 0 1. Yeah, let's go for a Ding win. Okay. Ayakin Carlson. Oof. We've heard that pairing before. Ayakin Carlson. Draw. 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 Um, you know what? Let's go one zero for the boys. How do we feel about? Is that too controversial? I mean, why can't Sergey win? He's playing well. He's got white. Of course he can. I just don't think he will. But okay. so erroneous. Draw. Raw, says um, I'll take Lev in this one. I want to to, to, to okay. I will also see some blood in the war. water. You, you Yangi versus Grishtuk. I'll take Sasha. I will take a draw. And I'll take you, Yangi. And wait... Le Um, mm, draw. Yeah. Yeah. Wei Yi White against Nakamura. 1 0. Wei Yi, come on. Uh, he deserves a win. I'll go for draw, but yeah, I'd be happy to see Wei Yi win. He's had a rotten tournament so far. All right. So um, today, as always, we've got a lot of other stuff going on apart from the chess. Um, as people know, uh, this tournament is about an heritage chess by focusing on the players and their respective nations. And today it's all about the Armenian chess miracle. Um, for all of you guys who want to learn about where it all started in Armenia, uh, get yourselves over to chess24.com slash tour. I was probably in Yerevan, no? Probably in Yerevan, yeah. But there's a fantastic article written by the one and only Colin, I believe, who, uh, who's done a lot of stuff. Uh, some more articles as well on the Armenian chess miracle, of course, Levon Aronian being the poster boy for elite level modern chess. Uh, the great, arguably, I, 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 actually, I better not get into this if he's the greatest Armenian ever. I think I'm going to get a lot of people. Tigran Petrosian? Well, yes, but okay. We can we can 
make that a valid argument there, can't we? If, if we're in terms of pure chess strength, you could argue that Levon Neronian was stronger. But again, you could argue that. Um, people from different, uh, from different generations is often tough. But you know, Peter is a Petrosian truther. Are you what's your views on Petrosian, uh, Peter? I f I'm a fan. I think uh, I think he gets uh, he gets a bit of an unfair rap in, in in terms of his his reputation for being boring and not very exciting and so on. But I don't know if that kind of qualifies me as a truther on on, on that point. Uh, and, and we're not yeah, talking suspect, about the former world champion here. We're talking about <laughs> the currently active grandmaster Tigran Petrosian. Just to clarify, absolutely. Greetings. Yeah. Who? And I, I, I think there is currently two of them, and I'm pretty sure I lost one of them during the 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 World Rapid and Blitz in Moscow in 2019. Uh, so yeah, they they are also extremely good. But uh, all these historic comparisons are obviously very difficult, uh, and uh, if if I if I had to bet, I would suspect that Tigran Steel Hall is is more of a sacred figure in uh, yeah. in Armenian circles. But Levon will Levon will run him very close. Uh, Levon is is absolutely a national hero right now, and uh, I, I I'm not very uh, very convinced in my own opinion there. I I, I don't know uh, if if it's possible to gauge that, and if it is, who comes up on top? Fair enough. Well, you guys can make your own. Have you ever have you ever played in Armenia, guys? No. no. World Junior Championships, 1997, in Yerevan. Oh, so I had a great time. Yeah, because uh, my hotel, favorite Armenian everybody. chess. I think I actually stayed in that hotel. Yeah. Everyone did. I played. I played up. Uh, I went there as a very, very young kid with my dad as part of some kind of an exchange. Like we, there was a Sibiris, probably even Leningrad in those days match against Yerevan. I don't recall the exact year. And then I played two events in uh, in Yerevan in '96. First the the Grandmaster Round Robin and then the Olympiad. And during the Round Robin, uh, that's that's my uh, my favorite illustration of uh, what chess means to the Armenians and you know the, uh, the 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 quality of the chess scene there. In the last round, I was playing Sumbatul Putyan, who is uh, mm -hmm. an absolute local favorite. And uh, you know, much much beloved figure in in Armenian chess circles, and uh, a victory, I think, maybe would have given either of us a tie for first. Or I mean, it was important to from a sporting perspective. I played, I think, some kind of uh, he, he played French all his life, and I think I replied with like d three, d five, knight b d two, and we had this kind of a uh, uh, what's it called, uh, King's Indian, King's Indian. Uh, King's Indian uh, uh, attack uh, type position and at some point it became very sharp and uh, I left the pawn on d3 on pre's he could like I played f2 f4 attacking the knight on e5 and he could take the pawn on d3 but then the knight gets caught uh, in like a move or two I it has no squares to go from d3 but he he can still take on d3 and collect more or less my entire structure uh, as compensation, and uh, there will be a very, very sharp position on the board where I have like an extra piece for maybe one or two pawns. But Black will have a huge uh, pawn feast in the center, which will threaten to run down the board. And we were playing in a theater, which was consistently at least half full. And this being the last round, it was I think closer to completely full than to half full. And when Smbat took on d3. There was actual applause for like a minute in the in the playing hall, uh, and it was not because he won a pawn. It's because people instantly understood that this is a peace sacrifice, which will lead to a very exciting fighting position. And I don't think I've encountered this before or since. First, you know, this level of passion for the game, and secondly, this level of just general understanding of what's happening on the board. It wasn't like if somebody blundered a mate in one. It was a very important 
kind of tactical slash strategic decision, which, you know, you needed some time to process. And, uh, yeah, and I remember that reaction very clearly. And other participants probably weren't that happy about it because we were nearing time trouble. And uh, it was probably a little bit distracting for everybody. But it was still a very, very sweet moment, you know, to, uh, to see people actually care this much. That's uh, that's a nice story. Jan, ever ever been showered? Uh, your boards ever been showered with gold coins? Um, neither literally nor figuratively. I've never played in a theater. I normally play in like empty high schools. You never played in Dortmund? I thought you did. Okay, I did lie, but <clears throat> um, no, I can't recall any any applause. Ever. What about you? Yeah, happened a few times. It was either applause or shouting. I, I often get it confused. They were either very happy or very upset. Um, what happens when they put you on their shoulders? Are they trying to throw me out of the place or are they, you know, celebrating? I don't know. It's one of those. Keep two. going, keep going. It's good no, stuff. No. No, I've never had anything of the sort, obviously. Mm -hmm. Nice story, Peter. Hope no, the passion for chess in Armenia is, of course, incredible. And pardon me if I have my numbers wrong, but it's like 3 million people. It's a little more than Hamburg, a little less than Berlin. And they've won the chess Olympiad three times in the last 20 years. Yeah, it's very impressive. Hamburg has not won the chess Olympiad that often. Certainly hasn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. In our hearts, though. And the team That's wouldn't be so bad, you know. Cast Muller. Mm. <laughs> um, remember, also, I, I know we're we'll get in our first plug of the day, but of course, uh, you can get your merch today. Some very unique stuff out there. All you have to can do I get that shopping bag? I really want it. Go ahead, sorry. Man, you can pick a match. Uh, you can pick up. What does it say? You have to uh, pick a matchup during today's prelims and post it on Twitter and say who you think you'll win. So any matchup today, put it on Twitter with a picture. Use the hashtag Her Heritage Chess. That's one word, Heritage Chess. And you might win some merch. So wow. we've, get, we've done a bit of... Uh, if that doesn't go viral, today. what will? Exactly. So we'll see your best guesses. And we'll talk about some other stuff as we go throughout the show. So, games are about to kick off. Two minutes time. Let's uh, go, yo. Yeah, let's get going. I'm, I'm looking. I want a, I want a very, very bloody day. I want a lot of act. No draws, just chaos. And uh, yeah, we'll see by the end of the day who qualifies. It's going to be very, very, very interesting. And hopefully we'll get a lot of interviews as well. Some of the players hopefully will come on and share their thoughts. And uh, you want a bloody day? I did want a bloody a sanguinary day. day. I, yeah, exactly. I want to. I want really. I want upset, and I want tears. Someone, whenever I watch that movie Gladiator, mm -hmm. when I see this guy Maximus played by Russell Crowe on screen, I think of you. Like when he says, add my signal, unleash shell. I could see you as the commander of these Roman legions there. Right. I'm going to have to work on the bod a bit. Although I did go for a, a nice few kilometers run today. And uh, I'm going to come back to boxing soon. I just did like seven push-ups in a row. I am completely exhausted. Wow. That's even worse than me. Sorry. Okay, that you. was a lie too. But I have this little... <laughs> I have this little app called push-ups and every other day it bothers me do more push-ups and that keeps upping the number but well, it's really tough already like yeah. it's a horrible horrible app <laughs> does not like me all right daniel duboff has no problem with apps or apps or push-ups or pull-ups we talked about it a little yesterday it's insane how ripped daniel duboff is he yeah. should not be a 2700 player 
with that body. And he has the white pieces. It's also insane how well prepared he is. That will probably be his big advantage against Ali Reza Firuja, who is, of course, one of the sharpest minds out there, 16 year old prodigy. But Dubov's home cooking is known to be nasty, just like Lawrence's. <laughs> Let's Duda, see. in the meantime, is more known for his practical strength, his fearlessness. And he's gone for 1c4 against Ding Liren, which brought him a fine victory against the world champion yesterday. First time, I believe, on his heritage day, Jan Shishtof Duda defeating Magnus Carlsen. Let's see if he can slay the next giant of the game in Ding Liren. Indeed. And Wei Nakamura have also come out the gate firing in a very. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Not like, this line again. Uh, yeah, let's put a rook on A4, aren't we geniuses? You know. Uh, well, let's. <laughs> um, why, why so, this we? is a line of the Berlin defense that has been played so often at the highest level. The first time you see it, it looks very cool, this rook h6 move, especially at this point. There is a little bit of Berlin fatigue we need to bring. Peter Leko in for all these games. He sounds very excited about it. But the rest of us, we're not smart enough about the little subtleties here. We've seen plenty of games. Maxim Varshila Graf against Magnus Carlsen. Hikaru Nakamura on the black side many a time. Alexander Grishuk had a game here in the candidates recently. So plenty of action. But I still haven't mastered the subtleties. Peter, you? No, 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 no. I've, I've... Very happy to stay away from analyzing the Berlin for the last maybe 10 years and uh, don't intend to, you know, get back into the habit. At least they're, at least they're doing it very quickly and uh, neither player's name is Grishuk. So we are unlikely to see a one-hour tank in a position where both players still know all the theory. Yeah, it happens rarely in 15-minute games. Anyway, but one of our players is called Grishuk. Has his game begun? No, not yet. Yeah, what's going on with the other games? Strange. Where's Sasha at? He's going to start soon. Dubov against Ali Reza. Ali Reza is playing the Karakan sort of exclusively these days. And this is an old line, bishop b4, cd knight d5, and queen c2. Back in my days. In the 90s, this was considered to be a dangerous surprise weapon. And people were debating, can you go bishop a5 here, a3, knight c3, bc, knight d4, knight d4, queen d4, or is this just too risky after bishop b5 check? Then it somehow went away. You know, at some point in April, just disappeared. Um, I am not sure what the current status is. Yeah, neither do I. I. The extent of my knowledge would be sort of exactly the same what, uh, to what you just said. Uh, I'm aware it's possible to win that pawn, and sometimes you get mated and sometimes you don't. I, I, I have no idea how to dif differentiate between between those two uh, occasions. Bishop play 5 played in the meantime, which is uh, possibly good news for us, because those positions are very sharp and quite interesting, and... Uh, could be exciting to watch potentially, and uh, Daniel could be relied upon to to have a, an idea uh, or two uh, about what's going on there. We'll find out. He's taking a minute here, Daniel Dubov, who you can see on your screen in the middle. We have the dudes very centrally. Dubov with the longer hair, Duda with the white shirt, leaning back a little. I like this hairstyle on Dubov, I have to say. Suits him. Do we have liftoff in kayaking Carlson? E4. What's he going to do? We have no liftoff there, which is interesting. I'm not sure where Magnus yeah, is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unusual to not have, not have all the games start at exactly the same time, but... Uh, perhaps the, the gremlins in the in the wires are 
to blend. No, it's normal. There's a few seconds because these games are being generated manually. But here we go. E4, C5. These pigeons are being generated. Blech, I can speak. E4, C5, Knight F3, E6 by Carlson. This is not his usual yeah, choice. This is not his usual choice, and I wonder if uh, you know, uh, no. And uh, that that uh, topic is uh, is off the off the agenda instantly. The, the classical Scheveningen, uh, which is really not something you should be doing. We, I think, we are very much in agreement on that topic with Jan. And something that Manus seems to be doing every now and again these days. Uh, and for the he first played against time, Hikaru in the Magnus Cars Invitational, yeah. but Hikaru didn't go at G4, which is supposed to be, quote unquote, the refutation. Mm -hmm. Kayakin does, and here we go, G4, E5. I think wow. I played this line once with Black. I was very inspired by our friend and teammate, yeah, yeah, Livio Di Tonisipiano, who I believe played this at some point semi-seriously with the Black pieces. Uh, so I thought, why not try this once? I didn't lose, but I enjoyed roughly zero seconds of that game from start to finish. So I, this did not become a regular feature in my repertoire. Bishop b5 check, bishop d7 takes, takes knight f5, h5, I think is sort of the point here. Uh, hoping to fight against the knight on the 5 uh, by undermining it with h5 and taking only 4 if white goes either g5 or even gh. Uh, but yeah, I, I think these positions are against a reasonably well-prepared opponent, incredibly dangerous for black. And uh, um, I, I have a feeling this is the one game where Magnus kind of shows what he has against Harris. Yeah. It's for a reason, though, that Harris has a bad rep. No, it's not like computers do not spot this move. E5 after G4, and I do not think they like it. So I'm very curious if he has some new insights here or if it's, you know, a one-off, as we say in the business, just a little surprise line that he's going to play once and then retire. Then again, yeah, we'll, we, we'll we thought H5 was a one-off. So <laughs> you never know. Never. Well, it actually, it, it actually sort of was, right? Because he, he repeated it with the other color, so it doesn't count. Yeah, but he played against Ding, then against you, and then with the other color. But yeah, I hear your point. So bishop, so, check bishop d7. I know absolutely nothing about the theory here. Knight f5. Yeah, I think you go h5, and then after g5, knight e4, yeah, is the point. Or, uh, I'm not sure g5 is the most threatening move. There's also yeah, yeah, just bishop g5 point. exists. Maybe even f3 exists, but f3, I think, is not that... Uh, not that horrible. I'm trying to remember what I was scared of the most when I was trying to prepare this for black. Bishop g5 currently seems the, the scariest proposition of everything white has here. If knight takes g4, just h3 or f3, force the knight to go back to those squares where it can be taken with the bishop, and then the knight lands on d5, and it looks kind <laughs> of strategically lost. Goodness. And I'm, I'm sure I had something against this, because uh, black is not lost here. Uh, Magnus would not have entered this if this was genuinely outright bad. But I I can't figure out what the plan could possibly be here. What can we do? G6, F6? Yeah, but G6 like HG and GF you seem also to be more or less completely busted strategically. And f6 bishop goes somewhere, let's say c1 or something. It's uh, it's confusing. Let me check what um, how did my game go. I think I played this against Rajab of once mm -hmm. in, a, in a World Cup. All right. While we find out, let's do a brief tour through the games. Wesley So against Levon Aronian is a mainline Catalan debate. Looks like the top players are still debating this territory. And bishop to g5. h6 is already a small surprise, but h6, bishop f4. Too subtle for me why this pawn would be worse on h6 than on h7. But I'm sure Wesley has a point. No, I played something else, actually. I played something else altogether. I played g4, h6, bishop b3, e5, which is a, a relative of this line, but a, a kind of a distant relative. So disregard everything I said. 
Wesley so we has usually do. pawn in this game. I think we should go to the position, yeah. To the Wesley game? Yeah. Okay, but this is, as far as pawn sacrifices go, this is uh, like a four on the excitement scale, no? Like, so, you it's know, positional, exciting, thought... center, blah, blah. But right. yeah, it's pawn. It is a pawn, yeah, and uh, you can take with uh, with either piece and white, I assume, starts with some C4 play. Uh, here, yeah, well, no, well, probably not, not instant. Probably rook DC1, actually, because we don't want to be allowing bishop B5, yeah. So rook C1, the bishop has to go, then C4, one other minor piece has to go to sidestep the C5 fork. Um, can I take? Probably not, yeah. Nah. That doesn't seem very enjoyable now. Nope. Rook DC1 played by Wesley. Yeah, bishop A4, rook DC1 on the board. Yeah, and, and, and something like bishop C6, uh, C4, C4, bishop E7 maybe appears to be kind of normal. And uh, White still needs to prove that uh, he has something tangible for. Whoa, and uh, Lev dis disagrees entirely and goes C7, C5 himself. Um, which is a very concrete, re concrete reply to, to White's idea C4. Uh, they both are, you know, for how unforced this position appears to me, they both are playing very, very quickly. Uh, so I would like to consult my, my source of all knowledge, Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson. When, where does the theory end here? What, when, where? Where does the theory end here? Like I've never seen bishop g5, h6, and now bishop f4. Like they take here usually. Okay, it might not be bishop, unprecedented, but it's news to me. Bishop f4, okay. of course, is a line here. Uh, and a5, bishop d6, but to provoke h6, it's over my head. Now bishop d2, yeah, so uh, deep stuff. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what's what's happening here. I suspect White has enough compensation for the pawn currently, but maybe not more than that. And you you do have to prove it somehow because, of course, like if you give Black a tempo to play something like maybe six d seven here, Black is just in the horsey seemingly. Yeah, yeah Bishop, Bishop a five is very much, very much something you would like to. He goes e four. Wow, this oh, is missed the pin. clever. This actually stops ninety seven. This is very clever. Using the fact that c takes d4 loses a piece to c4, c5. Uh, and uh, because of that, stopping the knight from going to d7 because then the bishop on c6 will get caught. Good stuff by Wesley. So he's looked in shape throughout this tournament. But I want to see how this continues. Knight f5, h5. Jh played by Sege Kayaki. No bishop g5. Knight h5. Knight to d5, knight to c6. Still looks bad for black, doesn't it? But at least... Yeah, this, this, this entire line looks, looks very risky strategically. But here you can see the outlines of how this could end up being kind of okay for black, right? Yeah. We play g6, then we somehow hope to maybe start challenging the knight on d5 somehow eventually. And... Uh, because we forced White to play GH, we aren't really getting mated on the king side anytime soon. Uh, because our our situation on the king side is extremely solid. So yeah, well, Bishop G five played for, for Black. Yeah, and I briefly cheated just to see why Bishop G five wasn't a lot stronger than GH, and apparently the only move Black can play there is Knight H seven, which is a uh, uh, ah, of course. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> you really have to stop bishop takes f6. Like you, you cannot allow it. So you, you have to go to these length. Uh, but the game continues. It's uh, after knight after knight h7. You still have to prove you are uh, much better. How's my boy Daniel Duwoft doing? The chat said that yesterday I admired his abs, and today I'm admiring his hair. That I have a crush. But I'd like to set the record straight. I also admired his abs today already. So that is not entirely true. He goes castles after 
shall a5 which i've seen yeah, that's someone do uh, recently remarkable as well. to me very direct because obviously you would not give this bishop for a knight without a follow-up it's knight g5 threat it's checkmate forcing a concession either g6 or f5 Lereza goes with f5, rook to d1, queen f6, knight to f3. Black is not getting mated, but it's not so easy to get this bishop into the game. There's some d5, bishop g5. It's interesting, as mm -hmm. Dubov's opening stuff often is. Bishop b6 played. Bishop b6, yeah, very logical. You are preparing uh, to meet d4, d5, which could also be a, a logical move for white in some positions. I guess he wants to reply with knight before, and it's important to uh, move the bishop away from uh, from a5, so that let's say d5, knight before queen b5 isn't the thing. Um, rook d8 probably, no, rook d8 allows bishop g5, so he is not really threatening rook d8 yet, which means white probably wants to play bishop f4 for now, I assume. I, I don't know if uh, forcing the queen to go somewhere is such a great idea, like bishop g5, queen f7. I don't know who's benefit, benefited more from uh, that sequence of events. If black somehow gets the bishop from c8 to some normal squares and puts the rook on d8, he'll be completely fine. But it's a reasonably large if right now. Okay. What haven't we seen? Where's my boy Sasha at? Yeah, let's go to well, Yu Yang Yi versus Grishchuk uh, is somewhat more of a quiet affair. Uh, Good card spot. Well, it yeah. could explode at any. Yeah. G4, knight of six, e4. Let's go. Yeah. Well, I'm struggling to understand what knight h5 is all about. Obviously, uh, I guess it's trying to provo provoke g4, but does feel as though that helps white. I'm uh, confused, sir. I'm just clicking through the moves. Why not queen b3 here? Like, I'm confused what his plan is. To go g5 in. Because typically... I guess... The thinking is I you guess can't g5, do this. g5, queen b6, yeah. Yeah, g5, queen b7, question mark. Like, curious. Mm. Yeah, gh and queen b6 maybe, and it, it becomes some kind of an un ungodly mess with very unclear results. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but, but Sasha generally doesn't do these things without the reason. So no, exactly. Uh, and uh, yeah, current position is is also quite curious to me. Oh, specifically for the same reason that Lawrence mentioned. I don't quite understand what knight h5 is even trying to achieve. I don't think we want to play f5 because f5 runs kind of head first into g4. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about g4 even here and, you know, including f5 and weakening your king side, I'm definitely playing g4 there. Uh, so I, I don't quite understand. This appears just to be a provocation. As far as as far as I can see, he is just saying, "Play G4, you chicken." Uh, wow, those are fighting words. Those are very much fighting words. Yeah, also probably not the words he has in mind, but that's that's how it looks to me currently. Yeah, but that yeah that doesn't quite quite work out. So it has to go back, and then we go E4, and allowing E5 feels. Scary. I guess black takes. We take with the f pawn, and then maybe black is doing extremely well because maybe these are the the wrong light pieces white needs in these positions, like d f d f e h five or something. Maybe black is just completely fine, and this is exactly what he is trying to provoke here. Who knows? We shall find out. Yeah, interestingly, there's been uh, there's been a novelty in the Berlin. Wow. I checked because I thought I saw this before, and this indeed is that famous MVL Grishuk game, up right. to and including the move rook e f one, up to move twenty four. This continued the game, which prompted MVL to suggest there should be board games in the in the uh, players' lounge during the candidates because he waited for a move for like. A hun, uh, about a hundred minutes or something. No, not a hundred minutes, but 
definitely above an hour at some point. It was an hour. It was an hour. Uh, it was an hour. Yeah. Dan and I were commentating on, on it. And and Sasha played rook g6 after rook f1, which the computer seems to think is correct. But Nakamura instead played bishop c4 very quickly, uh, which the computer likes less. All of which is kind of confusing to me. I don't quite understand why. Well, you mix up. No, there's so many lines. Like, even if you work on this nonstop to keep in mind what to do, where, when exactly, it's not so easy. So he's, he's worse now after rook one of three? Uh, apparently not rook of three. <laughs> this is just, yeah. Uh, Rook f2 was the, the suggestion I've seen wow. here instead of rook f3, just giving the ball on g3 was check, uh, which is not, not an easy move to. We should explain for the viewers, by the way, Lawrence and I are not using engines, Peter is, just, you know, for, for fairness. To say. Exactly, yeah, and uh, I will stop, but uh, it, it was just, okay, you know, say. such a such a curious... Uh, curious sequence there that I wanted to check. Uh, what they did do uh, was force Wei Yi into a reasonably long thing, and he is no longer uh, doing that well on the clock. Hikaru is still at the very, very safe 12 minutes, but uh, Wei Yi is down to four and a half, which is... That's been his problem throughout the tournament. No? He's just spending way, no pun intended, way too much time um, to... Yeah, for 15, 10 rapid games. So rook f3, bishop f7. I h4 guess four is rook f7, rook g3. Mm -hmm. And where he goes h5, to which Hikaru replies with an extremely beautiful move, rook g4. I don't know if it works, but it's very pretty to look at. Uh, wow. This is, this is a very, very nice move. I don't know why it's, let's say, stronger than, I guess, rook. G5, maybe E6 was very strong. Maybe this is the point. So he is actually avoiding that. So Rook so G4 is giving also a very rook. importantly. And if this gets taken, the bishop skewers also fights rooks. Yeah. And very, very importantly, the knight on B6, which currently seems to be slightly out of play, is always protecting the rook on A8, meaning that we cannot just take on G7 here, give a check on G8 and pick up the rook on A8. Uh, which would be a normal tactical reply to this. Uh, so I think Wei Yi will be forced to take on f7 right now. Uh, rook takes g3. I guess rook takes g3. King takes f7 and e6 check. Mm -hmm. Probably. Uh, exchanging the e pawn for the h pawn. And it's probably going to end up being some kind of a draw. Because black takes, goes, I don't know, rook h8, h6, knight d5. And he generally in these types of positions is never better because the h pawn is so strong, but he's also never really worse. So he's always equal? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <clears throat> Got it. Yeah, that one. What's, what's going on here? The Kraken has landed on d3. Yeah, that, that that appears to have backfired badly for Young Shishtov. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's a seriously poor position for White. And I, well, you, you still have ninety one. Maybe you're not actually that much worse. But yeah, it it it's generally not what you are aiming for in these types of structures. Maybe C four rook B three even. If we can actually play C four rook B three without losing, White is just fine. Hmm. But I'm not I'm not altogether convinced yet. On ninety one, can we take take and then play? Or is also maybe maybe just c four and then bishop b two, bishop a one, just play it slow. Because yeah. you know, structure wise, white is doing completely fine. It's just this bishop on c one which looked very poor without the any squares to aim for, which is why I think it's important to play c four if it's a move you can make. And also, the knight on d3 will need to get to be smoked out at some point. But maybe we we actually get there eventually. But why? I don't know. Should we go back to the Carlson game? Uh, nah. Okay. 
In one second, I just want to very quickly see this. Um, it's getting very exciting. Looks horrific for Levon, but then again, he's a very yeah. It doesn't doesn't look very attractive. But if the queens come off, it instantly becomes fine. I I suspect. And by by fine, I mean eventual draw. The, the big question is, do the queens actually come off? Because if they don't, I suspect you get mated. Like bishop f1, bishop c4 will just collapse uh, collapse your position at some point. Maybe not right now because of rook f6, as Jan has expertly drawn with arrows. What about Expertly drawing is my thing. Maybe you can go rook a5, queen c1, bishop f1, and just claim that you got everything under control. No, you you always have everything under control. The question is, like, can can black somehow uh, trade enough pieces? Probably shedding one of the queen side pawns in the process. I assume uh, it's going to be the the a6 pawn more more often than not. But you do need to you do need to trade trade a, a few pieces here because. And uh, Wesley seems to indicate he doesn't believe he's better at all, which is quite interesting. I would. Suspect he is a bit better, but maybe maybe we're just Wesley, completely wrong. What is this? This is not in the spirit. I don't know. I mean, if if Wesley just genuinely doesn't think he's remotely better, he is well within his rights. Oh, great. Okay, let's go to the Carlson game because we have had action there, Jan. Uh, did they call you action, Jan, by the way? You, your boy? Yes. Biker and... Um, Everyone calls me action, Jan. Helmut and... Uh, um, Wolfgang and all your boys? Yeah. yeah. Wolfgang, he just calls me... Um, uh, I got nothing. He just calls you. That's all he does. He just ring. Yeah. He just brings you up. But Kayakin, right, let's let's look. I'm curious about this position because this is a sort of position I always felt Sergei Kayakin was an absolute master of. Um, comfortable. Uh, I don't know. I think why probably should have tried getting more uh, more out of the uh, the opening and why haven't we got this not but like Bishop this F seems manageable for Black, honestly. This 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 doesn't seem as horrible as all that because there will always be some counterplay against the White King side. You okay. want to play Bishop F six followed up by H five, but exactly. So Bishop F six, you can't really cast. Uh, he plays Bishop F six. I think Rook H seven is probably no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you definitely don't castle into it. You play Rook, rook H seven or Rook okay, G eight. I, I suspect H5. Rook H seven. I go H five. H five, and let's say I go Bishop. Yeah. No, but that actually doesn't quite work out for me. I get made well, on the G8 yeah. square in the end. Yeah. 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 I wanted to play Bishop 4 here, and then I realized it doesn't quite work as well as well as I'd hoped uh, because wow. there is a slight tactical mishap at the end. Why does it feel like Magnus is in big trouble here? Like. I don't know. Maybe we can include ninety seven somewhere. Maybe even in. Why don't we castle? We're not allowed. Castles H five. You're getting made it, no? H five. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't want to get made it. Yeah. It's too slow. Yeah, that that seems a little bit too risky. But Bishop six ninety seven mm -hmm. might be might be semi playable. Knight. Ninety seven queen goes somewhere and then rook H seven. Yeah. Ninety-seven. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very much on board with the yach, but there is a, an important difference there. I'm not getting mated on g8 because I will be taking with the knight on g6 probably, and maybe this is not, not as horrible as all that, because I think the, the one important part about bishop h6 is that it stops white from casting queen side, so uh, the white king will have to be on. Uh, Ivan for some time yet. Um, okay, very interesting. Duboff 
Ferugia is also, um, it's kind of... Uh, no, this is sort of exactly the position you don't want to get when you give up the bishop on d3. I think, I think Daniel is slightly worse, right? Maybe really? not by much, but... He has an e5, e5 square. Uh, maybe not. f6, it'd be slightly worse, but like this, I guess he's okay now. Uh, with the pawn on f6, he would be majorly worse, I think. Like in a, in a lot of trouble, which is why I think, uh, yeah, the pawn on the five is a very important detail, which kind of keeps him afloat, but I still don't like it. So what does black do here? Bishop d5, I guess, is natural hitting. Yeah, I thought bishop d5, queen e6 simply, yeah. And then rook a d8 and... Uh, G5 might become a threat actually. Your your pieces are a little bit sort of standing on air there if you put the knight on E5. Jan uh, Chistov in the meantime has resigned. He had an absolute... Say what? How did that go so quickly? It went very downhill. Ah, he didn't go for the C4. He, he let the Kraken live. It's always a mistake. A4, A5 looks very off topic. Yeah, that, Ding that was, does not forgive. No, that that was a poor game by. Yeah, like, that's just not a very good game by Young Shishtof, uh, We You have to say. Magnus seeing this game must be thinking, why does he play like that against Ding? And then just crushes me. Exactly. Rook D8 on the board by Mag. Talking about Magnus, uh, Rook D8 has appeared. So 97 did happen. Rook D8. Oof. Yeah, 97 as expected, queen d3, rook h7, rook d1, rook d8, and uh, well, he wants to play queen e6, obviously. If he gets to play queen e6, most of his troubles will be behind him. Uh, h5, uh, very understandably played by Sergei. Now, I would expect bishop f4. Mm -hmm. uh, but the inclusion of rook d1, rook d8 means that if white takes on g6 now, we take on h1, white takes on h1, we no longer can recapture with the knight, which is exactly. probably important. Uh, but but maybe this is still fine for black because the knight on h1 is really kind of uh, not participating in festivities very much. That's true. Takes, takes, fg. And we want to play king f7 next move or king or queen e6, either one. Uh, if you play queen c4 here, I think I can play queen c6. Because queen e6, queen takes e4 is actually not something you want to be doing. Uh, yeah, I can pick up the knight on h1 with check and then consider my options. All right, Magnus hanging in there. Before play eight. Yeah, so far, I think it's it's maybe just fine for Black now, because he he got rid of most of the the issues his position had ten moves ago. So, Danger Mouse Feeder Master saying, "I just joined. First words I heard were Larry telling me my fantasy pick resigned. Wouldn't happen with Tanya. I guess that's Jan <laughs> Shishtov." Sorry, sorry, Danger Mouse. I think we can agree. It is Lawrence's fault. It's all my fault. And it yeah, it's generally a very good policy just to assume that. Why did you resign, there. by the way? Like not that. Rook H six, I think. Direct them all. Yeah, that that, mm. that seems a bit yucky. Yeah. yeah, this bishop is still. Yeah, yeah, that that really doesn't seem like fun at all. Even Lawrence Trent, a man who enjoys reading the Twitch chat, does not think this is fun. Shout out to the Twitch and the Chess24 chat. What's happening? Um, draw, Yu Yang Yi Grishchuk. So that's happened. Uh, that was a very weird game. Uh, yeah. Very strange affair. Not, I think they both weren't, weren't ready to commit in that game one way or the other. So uh, that's a fear of commitment. Yeah, fear of commitment. Hikaru is a pawn down, but 
it's one of those ending. Yeah. Rook H4 is a very important move here where it gets to C4. And uh, yeah, you <clears throat> you either have to give up the C pawn or you have to go extremely passive to try and hold it. And then black just, yeah, I think it's just. It's 95. It's just a draw, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's just a draw. Yeah, that's going to be a draw. And so Duboff, look, the position is getting worse, move by move, has to be said. I mean, feels as though Firuja is making great progress here. Well, but H3 with the intention of meeting G5 with Bishop H2 is like not the greatest sign in the world. Uh, Firuja starts with Rook A D8, which is also very, very understandable. Rook A D1, you, 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 you can't allow Bishop D4, so that now the fight is kind of centered around whether Black can uh, uh, ever play that move. But I still like, let's say, takes takes. Uh, now we can even play F4 at the end of that variation if we want to. Takes mm -hmm. takes G5, Bishop H2, F4. It allows Knight G4 though, so I'm not sure if we need to. G5, uh, G5 played, Daniel will have to play bishop h2. And queen f6 is also very much uh, a move you could be very interested in here. Because if black plays f4 and then forces the queens off the board, that endgame will be, I think, as is known in the business, won for black. Maybe that's <laughs> a bit harsh, but not by, not by much. Yeah, 97, 97, 97, yeah. Dude. Do we call dupe of the dude too? No, we don't, right? That's no. dude. No, I don't think I don't think we do. The dupe. <laughs> dupe. Yeah, well, sort of, but but not really. Um but take? Now, yeah, this G, has to be horrible. GF and then and then take on the eighth with the queen or with the with the queen, yeah. Because um, yeah, you don't want to allow queen h8 check. Rook d6 is the only active move you have here. Uh, and I was trying to calculate if queen e7, rook h6, queen g5 just wins on the spot. I suspect it doesn't, but it comes close. Some rook there probably is even stronger options available. Yeah, because here rook h7 check followed by rook g7 actually defends the g2 pawn, which is regrettable and not something we would want to do. Mm. It is There's desperate also... measures. Hang on a second. There's also rook d8 right now, right? But that probably ends in a perpetual, yeah? Rook d8, knight f6, queen f6. Queen takes, we pick up everything. And if you don't give the perpetual, you lose. But you probably do give some kind of a perpetual. Maybe not. Maybe it runs away. You could pick up the pawns on h6 and f4 with checks, but... Uh, king e7, I guess. Queen f4, but I think you lose after king d7. Because bishop c7 will be a very, very painful threat here, very difficult to parry. Choices for Ali Reza. He does have a minute and a half, not oceans of time left. Let's check the camera. Ali Reza studying hard. Dubov. Yeah, and Dubov. Dubov is down to 13 seconds. Yeah, Dubov. That is that is not good news. Um, well, the to, good news is go... a few moves do come kind of naturally, assuming G takes F4 will be played. So he will gain 30 well, seconds. I mean, yeah, currently Rook G8, I think I like more. I think Rook G8 might be uh, might be stronger, unless Queen E5 is a is a reply. White could consider that Queen E5 might be might be a Good reason not to play rook d8. We'll see. Yeah, he does go gf, so we will see the other position very soon, I assume. King f7, knight e8. Pretty sure he takes with the queen, because why would you ever allow queen h8 check? Uh, and Dubov needs to play rook d6, because if that rook doesn't get activated on that move, it never gets activated pretty much, so... Yep, queen takes, rook d6, and yeah, now now Ali Reza needs to find uh, needs to find the precise move. I think if he if if he plays well from here, I think he's favored to to convert this into a full point. But I so far I 
don't know exactly how he's supposed to deal with the threat of queen f6 and rook h6. Seven. So we're going to get this line, maybe rook h6, queen g5. I wonder what his idea is after rook g7. Yeah, queen g5 is not forced, but it does it does seem as if we're headed towards something like that. Yeah, queen g5, rook h7, king e6, rook g7, and maybe queen h5 or something. Queen h5 played, rook h7 played. King e6 will very likely happen. Here we go. And now either rook g7 or queen g7 to cover the mate on g2. It's like in basketball when a player runs back and then blocks from behind g7, covering the g2 pawn. Very unusual. Mm -hmm. is, he, is his idea to actually go queen f6 there and it force a queen trade? And then claim that... Queen g7 played. So. Okay. Well, this definitely forces the queen trade, so you have to take. And then yeah, that's uh, that's um, an, an interesting choice. But he, he does have the h pawn as as a runner here, but doesn't really feels run like he doesn't, doesn't have really a queen run, against yeah. bishops. No, like f three, no. bishop d four, king f six. Looks yeah, lost to me. Bishop d four as well, but. Yeah, I think I think you lose long term. I think long term Blacks make makes uh, some progress on the queen side, just pushes his pawns a little bit, and then starts attacking the eight to b three setup uh, forces a, a weakening and uh, and starts picking up material. I like a three as well, just to uh, get rid of one of the double doubled guys. Yeah, that game that game is kind of uh, bad news for uh, for Daniel. He really needed not. Not, I mean, ideally he would want to win, of course, but losing to uh, what appears to be sort of direct competition for like seventh, eighth place is not great. So in the order of his preferred results, win would be first, then draw second, and losing is way down the list. Something along those lines, yes. It should be one played after G3. Yeah, it does seem likely. I'm surprised by this, to be honest. I I don't quite huh. understand why why Ali Reza chose to limit the, the the amount of pawns on the queen side. I would have played something like a five bishop d four b six and then bishop d one. He probably is still winning, but uh, I'm I'm not yeah. sure if I if I like the decision to uh, to shave some pawns off the queen side. Just seems generally wrong. No, as the stronger side, more often than not, you wanna keep more pawns on the board. Yeah, exactly. I'm. I'm. I'm not sure what 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 that was about. Although, I, I, yeah, once I suspect the king run towards towards e2 somehow still decides the game. But uh, yeah, but no, there's, yeah, there's no. night to be kept on Harry. Um, can I interrupt and just ask what on earth is going on in Magnus Carlsen's game? He trapped his own bishop on a3 and was forced to play a5 there because knight e2, king b3 was a threat. Oof. Um. Um, why exactly? Like, what is happening here? Well, that's my oh, an unforced operation, yeah? A little bit, yeah. Maybe he is still fine because the G pawn is still quite strong, but yeah, I, I don't quite understand why you would do this to yourself. Probably it's still better, makes though. a draw, though. Draw, yeah? Yeah, I think, I think it's just a draw somehow. White goes C4 and then uh, you know, gives up one a, a pawn to get the king to g5 and sort of never loses from that position. Uh, yeah, probably doesn't run very many risks objectively. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, just just fine. Well, well, bishop f4 would maybe scare me a little bit, but I suspect it's still a draw. Yeah. I guess king e6, king f5, king g4, and so on. Yeah, we we just never lose this position with white, right? Nope. But uh, yeah, it seems like Magnus is sort of very ready to continue pushing the envelope there more than a little bit because uh, surely he had absolutely no call uh, doing any of that. He could just keep the bishop on normal squares and white is you know, never better. Yeah. 
Maybe he was just trying to generate winning chances by distracting the king. But nah. Should be a draw. What else do we have? We have draw in Yu Yang Yi Grishuk and draw in Wei Yi Nakamura. Mm -hmm. Ding Liren defeats Jan Shishtov Duda. Wesley So, Levan Aronian ends in a draw. Sagi Kayakin versus Magnus Carlsen will end in a draw. And it does still look like Ali Reza is a favorite to win his game against Daniel Dubov. Although it ain't over yet. No, it, it, it ain't over. And honestly, I think, you know, in terms of easiness of conversion or ease of conversion, as it is probably called in the English language, it's been easier previously. I'm, I'm pretty sure it has been it has been easier than than this. I'm a little bit surprised by Rook G6 because Rook G6 would. I'm trying to figure out why we're forcing Black to play four. four is it... Yeah, exactly. Like, why are we, why are we asking Black to make the move he probably wants to make here? Something like this, yeah. But. Yeah, but I'm worried about things. But maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe it's fine, yeah. And then then it definitely makes sense to at least, you know, because he, he had a threat. Bishop B3 is a good reply to the threat, though. H5, Bishop F7 seems to be pretty much unplayable. But we can always go back to, like, Rook C6 and Rook C8 and reestablish the previous pattern. Goes all the way back with the bishop to stop h5. Very hard for white to bring his king into the action because f2 is so weak. Yeah, the king the king is more or less destined to stay stay on g1 for the for the foreseeable, but how is black making any progress? Black king can come. How is this going? Yeah, maybe something like this, and then just start the run towards e2. The thing is, it just gets checked, checked from the a from the e file when it gets to e2. So I don't know how much, how much that actually achieves. And Daniel is now ahead on the clock, so he's made so many moves in a row, more or less instantly, that he's he's gained almost two minutes, and uh, Alireza is back to uh, half a minute or so. Oh. This could go on for a while because I think it's uh, it's extremely possible to just uh, shuffle back and forth here with black, hoping that white makes some kind of a mistake, and uh, the mistake might never come. And uh, there aren't really any changes in the structure forth, uh, forthcoming, at least not not very soon. So Dubov could be holding this. Reaching his second favorite result in this game, which would leave him at minus one with very much still a shot at qualification. Well, Ali Reza, he's not out. He's in minus two, currently three out of eight, but he probably needs a win to, you know, close that gap. If not in this yeah, game. For, for, then for Ali Reza, it's extremely important to, uh, to convert this, obviously. Mm. A win would uh, give him a clear ninth with three rounds to go, which doesn't sound very promising, but <laughs> it's better than clear 11th he was in um, prior to the round beginning. Have you ever thought about doing a numbers show, Peter? Like <laughs> like fun with flax with Sheldon Cooper, like <laughs> fun with numbers with P Peter Svidler. I'd watch it. I, I know you would as you watch everything I do on every platform. Uh, um, I don't know of any other platform, so not sure what you're talking about, but the game has been a great drawn. Dubov versus Firuja. Where does that leave us? Give me the standings. 
The like standings are still cruising. <clears throat> yeah, because uh, of course there is now draws well. there is now a tie third to fifth instead of third to fourth with uh, uh, Dingler and uh, joining Magnus and Wesley on plus one, and then uh, Levon is on fifty percent, uh, Grishuk on fifty percent, Yuengi on fifty percent. This is currently our top eight, very neatly uh, neatly divided. Uh, Dubov and Clear in ninth on four out of nine. Ali Reza and uh, Duda on minus two, and Wei Yi uh, with two and a half out of nine is more or less out of contention mathematically even. So it's still the kids, yeah, on the outside looking in. The four youngest participants, is that true? On the ninth till twelfth spot? Pretty Just much, an yeah. old man's game, as I've always said. Very much so. I'm not 100% sure, but I think, yeah, I think Yu Yang Yi is older than Dubov. Everybody else, I'm pretty sure about. How old is Yu Yang Yi? Let me look up. But he must be like 26 or something. Yu Yang Yi. 25. And Dubov is 24. Close enough. There you go. Yeah, yeah, not the not the bloodiest of rounds. Uh, that's for sure. Only one decisive result, Ding uh, beating Duda rather convincingly. Looks like that's missed opportunities there for uh, for Ali Reza, of course. Wesley looked like he had a much better position as well. Um, so a bit of a uh, a bit of a conservative start to today's proceedings. Well, that was one worry about the format a little bit, that at some point the players with a plus score, if they prioritize just making the quarterfinals, of course, they could take it a little easier and the bloodshed could suffer from that. On the other hand, there's also the seeding, which, yeah, I guess does not matter that much if your priority is to avoid Magnus Carlsen, because currently it's unclear. Is Magnus going to finish th third, fourth, fifth? It's very hard to know which plays you're aiming for to avoid him. Um, but of course, the fight for eighth place should still provide us with a lot of drama. Because if anything, then the players in the lower spots will have to start taking great risks to get up there. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think with every passing round, this will become more more and more of a pressing concern for people, uh, even in currently safe uh, safe spots. Uh, but probably no no reason to to panic and uh, change your approach too much for people currently still getting in. Should be should be more in rounds eleven and twelve that we see. Uh, people trying to calculate exactly what they need for uh, placements. All right. Lawrence, have you ever thought about becoming a monk, dedicating your life to playing chess, brewing? Is it brewing with whiskey, distilling whiskey? Is that something that you could see yourself doing? Distilling whiskey and playing chess? No, just becoming a monk in general. Oh, a monk in general. Um, reminds me of that funny story. Not like a monk from the TV show Monk, not in a germaphobe sense, but in a sense of, you know, living in an abbey, in a monastery. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, it reminds me a couple of years ago, speaking with the ginger GM himself, uh, Simon, who has been known to... Uh, monk it up. No, well, yeah, or a non monk it up in his heyday. Um, actually, did buy a ticket, I believe, to go to somewhere, some land far, far away and live on a, you know, in a monastery of sorts or some kind of retreat to uh, cleanse his soul. And uh, I believe he even did buy the ticket. That's the, that's the story, but didn't end up going. Um, and I would also be in a very similar situation. I can see myself buying the ticket, but whether I'd actually make it to the airport or not, I don't know. I've, I've thought about this very seriously because I struggle to be present. You know, I'm being crippled by 
existential angst, just thinking about the future. And I hear that these things can help you to just live in the present. The one thing I'm worried about is I think it involves a lot of sitting on the floor for long hours. And I think that could be very painful. Like if they gave me a comfy chair there so I could try to be present with a decent cushion, I'd be in. But I, I've heard stories from people doing that, that it's really, really painful until your body adjusts just to all the sitting on the floor. So someone with more experience, if you can take that fear away from me, I'd be very interested. I'm bringing this up, of course, because this is the Lindor's Abbey Rapid Challenge. The tournament is supported by the Lindor's Abbey Heritage Foundation, where the monks started playing chess hundreds and hundreds, like 700 years ago. I can't do math. I always get the century wrong. And, and distilling whiskey. And we are not only celebrating the heritage of chess, but also the heritage of that beautiful site where I was thinking maybe, Lawrence, you and I could go for 10 days on a little retreat, find ourselves, talk about our fears, our worries, our dreams, like our common goals. <clears throat> but it did not sound like you were very interested. No, I mean, uh, I, I'd consider it. I'd consider it for sure, Jan. I can, all right, all right. It is an extremely like hipster thing to do, though, right? It's very hipster. It's very hipster. I did. Um, I probably will be going on a yoga retreat because I meditate. So, and a friend of ours here does something in Portugal. I'd very much like to do that. No phones, no internet, but it's not for that long. It's for like three, four days. But apparently, even that, no people really. It's just you and the tree. How do you how do you tweet from there? You, you, you're not tweeting from there, basically. You just tell some, have someone come with you to take pictures and then tweet it for you. Like, not how um, do yeah, no, no, no tweeting. Cool. Just what what fresh tweet at us hashtag Heritage Chess. <laughs> Especially if you're currently on a cleansing, on a yoga retreat, or meditating, we want to know. Sorry, Peter, I interrupted you. No, no, I, I just uh, making sounds with my uh, mouth. Mm -hmm. Gerald is saying it's a groundbreaking experience, yeah. Yeah. And I'm being told it's pronounced monk, not monk. Apologies. Um, do you want to know the scores on the doors for our little prediction game there? Let's so go, yeah. We, we all got Dubov uh wrong. We predicted wins. Duda versus Ding Liren, that's me and you, Jan, for the point. Peter on zero out of two. Kayak and Carlson draw, draw. All right, you guys win. Okay, uh, so Aronian. Uh, that's me and Peter for the draw and Jan, sorry, Peter, sorry, I beg your pardon, said a win for Aronian. That was incorrect. You, Grishchuk, the only one is Jan to get the point there. And then Wei Nakamura, I got a point, as did Peter and Jan said 1-0. Actually, scores on the doors for our little, our little, I have eight points. Jan has 10 points. He has eight points. Jan out in front. <coughs> you love to see it. Did Jan get like every You'll single one right? Or? Jan got, uh, he got uh, four out of six that round. Hmm. Standard. Um, Okay, so let's uh, look at the next round, shall we not, guys? Let's let's see who's playing who. We've got Grishchuk Faruja, Carlson Dubov, Baronian Kayakin, Ding So, Nakamura Duda, and Yu Yang Yi against Wei Yi. I do enjoy a good old Ding So every now and then. 
Carlson think, against Dubov is also a big one. I think so is actually an extremely uh, critical pair up because uh, if one of these. Yeah. Yeah, no. plus one Nietzsche, yeah, moving on. That's that's the worry I had. Yeah, that might just not, be not how Ding rolls though. So. Yeah, but you know, if Ding wins, he secures it. And yeah, Ding, why why Nietzsche? I, I don't believe that. I think he's here to fight. Um so let's see. I think he'll try and put the pressure on, and if he doesn't manage to, then I don't think he'll really push himself to try and win. But it's a bit if there's a decisive result there, then one of those guys are gonna be you know, right on the edge. And um, Levon Aronian as well. Levon has got wide against Koyakin. Very important game for Levon, who was in that group with Grishchuk and you on four and a half. Uh, you know, again, a win by any of these guys is is massive for them. But a loss is is catastrophic. And actually... Yeah, that's why they, they will all be draws. But on the margins, stuff could happen. Let's do predictions. What about Daniel Dubov with Black against Magnus? Daniel pretty much needs to win this game. Um, how is he going to achieve that, is the question. First of all, why does he need to win this game? And secondly, is that your first thought when Black against Magnus? You just, you know, try to play a beautiful game, no? Well, look, he's, he's on four out of nine. He's in ninth position. Let's mm -hmm. things being equal everybody makes 50%. Then he's pretty much in a must-win situation in round 11. Um, yes, he does play white against Levon, but, you know, white against Levon is, especially if Levon does something in this round, if Levon actually manages to score against Karyakin, he's not going to risk things against Uwe. So I actually think of all the times, given Magnus's form and given their personal relationship, we all know Magnus and Daniel have worked together and their friends. Daniel knows Magnus's um, tendencies very well. I actually think Daniel has to go for it now. I don't think he can wait, Rumble. wait uh, one. Interesting. Minute. It's go time. Yeah, it's go time, Daniel. We should remind everybody that it's only two games left if you're used to these four games every day, since this is an all-play-all -all round robin with 12 players. They play 11 games, and today they only play Three. Therefore, yeah, that's why I asked, because I would think that Dubov strategy should be try to survive this game with Black against Magnus and then try to beat Levon with White. But it's never easy to, you know, plan these things, plan these things out. We should also mention that if there is a tie between the players on let's say 50% or minus one or whatever, for eighth place, then I think the first tiebreaker is direct encounter. Mm -hmm. Then it's number of wins, and then it's all the other stuff, whatever that is, like Sonneborn, Berger, or all that other smart stuff. So we might have to do some calculating later on, but we do have Peter Swidler, ladies and gentlemen, and we will figure I it am, all out. I am just in, it, sitting, here, sitting here in complete shock because I... Somewhere midway your discussion of whether Daniel has to play sharply for a win with Black against Magnus, I realized I said people have to start playing uh, sort of uh, applying uh, more strategic thinking to their play in rounds 11 and 12. Yeah, yeah, that's why I pointed and, out. <laughs> It is only 11 rounds. So. Yeah, yeah, and uh, nobody, nobody, nobody brought me up on this when I said this, uh, which I... I appreciate you guys being uh, being polite with the senile old man, but I, I'm just I've had the, I've had a few minutes to to quietly process just how how out of touch I've become. Yeah, we just Don't say that uh, upset you basically, Peter. If I'm honest, we've just learned to do the to be the bigger man to let it fly. Yes, that is clearly. Um, That is clearly what is happening here. <laughs> what else have we got? Remember, guys, we have got Magnus Carlsen's course on Chessable. Also, uh, we mentioned it over the past couple of days, Magnus and John Bartholomew analyzing 10 of Magnus's most stunning games from 2004 to 2020. And, of course, you learn all of the key strategic aspects of middle games uh, that is so crucial for your improvement. Never been done. 
with the world champion and of course using the very uh, effective new trainer technology over at Chessable. You can get this course for 50% off uh, during the tournament. Uh, make sure you get yourself over to chessable.com slash Magnus. It's a, an amazing deal. And remember that, of course, on Chess24, we've got two deals currently ongoing. You can get a two years premium membership using the code RAPID2020 for a discount of 150 euros. Absolutely massive. Uh, if you want two years, hundreds of hours of videos and all the rest of it on Chess24, ability to play, for example, the likes of David Howell, who was doing the band splits just the other night. You want to play David, want to play Top Grandmaster, you've got to be a premium member, support the cause, which is also, of course, supporting the tournament. And uh, there's the merchandise as well. Uh, use the code TOUR2020, bags, hoodies, T-shirts, cups, mugs, whatever it is you love, use the code TOUR2020 um, where you can get some amazing merch. Go and check that out. Someone sent me, sent me that shopping bag. Usually I say, no, I want to wear my tie and my jacket. I don't need, need these hoodies and stuff. But I do need that shopping bag, bag badly. How do I get it? I want it. Chest24, if you're watching, ship it. Ship it indeed. Are we going to do predictions for the next round, guys, as we've got a few minutes? Yeah, oh, we should. All right. all right. Let's do that. So the first one is Grishchuk versus Frugia. I'm going to take Sasha. Huh? Jan? 1-0. You know what? Uh, Carlson Dubov. I'm going to pick Magnus to win this one. Okay. Yeah. 1 0. I'm going for 0 1 for the fans. He needs to win. And Daniel, he's capable. Right. We all know Magnus, if his opponent needs to win, he's happy to extend a helping hand with the white pieces. <laughs> uh, Aronian Kayakin. And draw. You know? Peter here? No. Uh, yeah, Peter is here. Peter is uh, trying to. I'm, I'm going to pick Lev. I'm just picking everybody with the white pieces in this round, which is. Uh, uh... Ding, so you're also picking Ding, I assume. No, I'm picking a draw in that one. No. Oh. Draw. So draw, yeah, I'm going to go with the draw there. Feels drawish. Uh, Nakamura Duda. Draw. Really? I'm going 1 0. There you go. The dude looks out of form to me. Peter? Uh, hang on a second. Draw. Draw. And last but not least, you against Wei Yi. Hmm. You is white. I'll go one zero. Yeah, let me let me take you and you and Gi as well. All right, I'm gonna take you as well. Let me take you by the hand. So uh, we've got that in the bank, and. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting round. Very, very interesting. I wonder if it would be nice to see for the fans Ali Reza win and for Jan Chistov win because then we would have just an unbelievably close. They'd both be on four and a half and they'd have a yeah, shot. Yeah, in, in terms of tournament intrigue, I would agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Um, I can't see it happening, but that would be fantastic. I think um, Hikaru has been just extremely good. Sergei has been extremely good. So I think they fully does. Are they mathematically through on six? I guess. Yeah, must be. Plus Math one is very likely enough for the top eight. No. 
Yeah, should be should be unreached. Yeah, I think only Dubov can catch them of the of the people not in the top eight right now, and he needs to win to, and probably the tie breaks favor them anyway. So yeah, should should just be mathematically in if they fail to show up for the last two rounds. Right. And uh, Alexander, I have, let's talk about Grishchuk just for a I can't make out his tournament at all. I've looked at all of his games and they've all been, for the most part, strange. Um, no flow for Alexandra, Alexa, Alexander thus far. Um, any thoughts, Peter, on how he's playing at the moment? Because it's, uh, it's, it's a, erratic. It's yeah, erratic. It's, a, it's very, very much curate, curate's egg. Uh, right now, yeah. Uh, I, I keep on, you know, as a as a friend and a, and a, and a long time fan. I keep on, you know, hoping to see uh, see his best because his best is uh, uh, absolutely scintillating. But yeah, very very much, uh, you know, meh so far. He's still on, you know, on current standings. He gets in, and in the knockout phase. Uh, you know, with the target much sort of clearer in front of you, he could uh, he could suddenly spark into life. But mm, yeah, so far, mm, not not his best tournament. I think he's just a corona dad these days, sitting in the flat with a bunch of kids trying to shuffle duties. When can who play a chess tournament? Get some work done, and he's been playing a lot. He must be he must be exhausted. We've had the debate that actually he didn't play in the last one and did commentary and so on. But still, Sasha, these are tough times. Hope you make it to the knockout stage. Absolutely. Yeah, I think in his case it's uh it's it's a lot more valid than in many others because he he does have to uh, juggle a lot of. A lot of things when he is constantly at home. Great. Um, why you? Uh, now I remember years and years ago. It was actually at the 2013 Tromso FIDE World Cup that you'll remember, Peter. Um, was it 2013 or 14? Sorry. 13. 13. Vladdy boy won. Vladdy won, and Wei Yi had a pretty good tournament, and there was lots of talk about Wei Yi. It's, it's kind of a... It's an interesting story, because he was really being billed as the next big thing, but didn't manage to really get past 27, 40, 50-ish, and has kind of just drifted for the past few years. No big wins, no clear achievements any i like any idea peter on why that might be for somebody who was of course at his age which i guess was the big factor that he was so strong so quickly. i don't really know i think uh it's a topic which i i never really did any proper research and i wouldn't know where to start honestly but it's a topic that uh that uh, we've definitely discussed uh, in, in, in private conversations and maybe even on air what happens to uh, Chinese talents somewhere around the age of, let's say, 22, 20, 23, 25, mm -hmm. uh, if they don't, uh, you know, achieve the, the absolute most, which so far, I think we, we can only talk about Ding in that, like, I mean, in, the, in in men's chess, obviously, uh, China has produced a, a large number of uh, absolutely exceptional uh, female players who have become world champions and so on. But uh, it's it's a story which, to a degree, keeps on recurring. Uh, a, a new Chinese star appears uh, on the chess scene, uh, does extremely well for a number of years, then doesn't exactly become you know a weak player but sort of uh, reaches some kind of a plateau or somewhere around let's say 27 30 which is these days you know clearly somebody who is exceptionally good at chess but also somebody who isn't immediately challenging for the world title 
and then not exactly disappears, but kind of uh, gradually drifts drifts away from you know the the public consciousness, and it it has happened you know to a large degree I think to uh, a number of very promising Chinese youngsters and uh, way maybe only the, the the most recent example. I, I I have no explanation, but it's definitely something that you could could observe over over a number of years. I thought the other thing was more that I thought it was a little after 22, 23, like 26, 27, and they think, okay, you can't become world champion. Then you also become more of a trainer and less of a player. Not sure if that's still in place since Wang Hao, yeah, has made sort of a jump at a bit of a later age. He's back to the candidates. While Wei Yi, how old is he? He's still young, right? He's like 20. I heard he's, he likes video he, games. He's still he's still very young. I'm, I'm I I don't necessarily mean that his career is now in the past and you know there is nothing positive in front of him. But just the 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 general you know ebb and flow of Chinese uh, Chinese talents is uh, is a topic. Is is what I wanted to say. Mm. Uh, I heard Ding Liren said something, and I'm paraphrasing or misremembering here, that he's happy he does not like computer games like Wei Yi. Maybe that's why. Lawrence, if you had not played all that Mortal Kombat in your youth, <laughs> where would chess have taken you? Uh, I was never a big computer games kid, actually, believe it or not, video games. I, I did have the Amiga. I enjoyed that and the Commodore and the early Nintendo. Wow, you're, you're that old that you're an Amiga? Did you play Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis? Yeah, I played, what was wow. that? game that was on the Amiga or the Commodore where you could actually there was like a battle on the square do you remember that one somebody in chat will know that there was a battle actually that the pieces would take a piece actually battle and that was fun uh, but no I was never a big computer games guy aren't the games going aren't the games going we're missing all the games we're missing all the games we've missed the, the games here we are. Apologies. Games have kicked off Alexander Grishuk against Alexander Fir against Alexander Firuja. That's exactly what it's called. Because Ali Reza Firuja <laughs> is a King's Indian because Ali Reza needs to win games. So yeah, with Alexander's Miroshnichenko and Swidler on the mic. Exactly. <laughs> mm, the openings are spicing up now. Absolutely. Love to see it. A four night E eight. Good old bayonet attack, which yeah, I think is still still kicking as a very serious weapon against the King's Indian, popularized by Kramnik, of course, in the late nineties, early two thousands in his matchups against Gary Kasparov. And Ali Reza does what he has to do with the tournament situation. He needs a victory. So the go to openings there are typically some Leningrad Dutch, some Kings Indian. But here we are. Yeah, and uh, luckily for him, it's a it's it's a situation where he definitely needs to play sharply for a win, but his opponent doesn't really need to play sort of sharply for a draw. So I think they could very much be you know in agreement in in wanting a full blooded uh, full blooded game. I think uh, Grishuk's tournament situation is not as secure, and also he generally doesn't. Apart from situations where it's absolutely sort of mathematically called for, he doesn't play for draws uh, very much uh, with the white pieces these days. All right, in Carlson Dubov, the Philly door makes another appearance that has been Dubov's weapon of choice for this event. He's continuously gone for this position, which, yeah. To me, it just looks ugly, but Dubov obviously has done some work on it, and I think he's held it more than once kind of comfortably thus far in this tournament. Yeah, but held it being the operative word. It's, uh, I guess the attraction here must be that, uh, you know, the position is kind of cramped and you definitely don't have, you know, any immediate winning chances as such. Uh, but it's also 30 pieces on the board, and uh, simplifying it is is going to be quite difficult for White. 
So there is always going to be a complicated middle game with plenty of uh, plenty of play available and eventually, hopefully, a mutual time trouble where things could happen. But yeah, f- f- clearly you would you would prefer this position with White if you know, if you had to choose. Yeah, that's the feeling I had too. But Dubov, you know, keeps going for it. Let's see if Magnus will manage to punish him. Um, Leko said yesterday that after Dubov survived one of those, that ugh, now we have to see more Philidors. And he was right. There are plenty more coming. Aronian against Kayakin, and Ding against Wesley. So I was expecting quieter games. This one looks fairly quiet. Yeah, the left game, nowadays, the left game is still, you know, has great potential to be uh, to be interesting. But the the anti Berlin in in Dingler and uh, saw, yeah, that that does look like they both feel they are coasting towards the quarterfinals and don't need to exert themselves too much. Yeah. Here, Lawrence Trent will love to see it. Knight d seven, Bishop a four. Your favorite move is on the board. Yeah, it's uh, it's the only opening in recent times that has given me uh, any sort of uh, feeling of excitement. Yeah, this is this is the one trick. <laughs> no, there are many tricks. One of the tricks, I should have said. I one misspoke. Sorry. Um, mm. This is one of the tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are lots no, of tricks. It's surprisingly, it's surprisingly non-stupid, yeah, for for how absurd the move looks at first glance, and uh, the structure they have on the board right now is something they often often get in this line when, you know, Black declines the invitation. Queen a five, and... Bishop d two, Queen c seven is a little too subtle for me. What's that about? I think that's a mistake. Honestly, I think the bishop belongs on d two in this position. It's quite yeah. naturally nice. placed on d two. I just don't like it. Queen, Queen A5 looks absolutely nuts to me, to be honest. But I think maybe he thought he could still play B5 in that position and then realized that Knight takes B5 without CBAB just wins a pawn for nothing. I don't know. Ugh. It just doesn't feel right to me to force yeah. White to play Bishop D2. Bishop D2 is not a bad move. You want Bishop D2 to cover that Knight yeah. and then go about your business. Exactly. It's probably not going to cost him very much because the Bishop eventually probably goes to f4 or somewhere and and black can make an argument that uh, it's it's samey samey to what it would have been but yeah i don't like it and there is some incredibly sharp grunfeld position in the in the old chinese game which i would very much like to know how they got there i know i can tell you this line which we've seen from Yu Yang Yi, the other day, two here. But you're not supposed to take on a6. This is very confusing. You're supposed to play bishop b3 here. He played knight g5 yesterday. Bishop b3 is the old. Um, yeah, knight f6, a4 line. Mm-hmm. But clearly, Yu Yang Yi has some ideas here. This is, is this some um, very old Kamsky Karpov stuff, maybe queen d5? Anyway, <clears throat> this is what they got. Yeah, it looks looks fine for black. Like to my to my obviously very biased view, this is a this is a very decent Grunfeld position for black. Um, um, my first question was why aren't we just better after Bishop G four? But I guess white can play D five using the fact that the Rook on A seven is kind of pinned, and after Knight B four, we still have A three, and it's a little bit awkward to. Although, I mean, I would definitely consider bishop takes c3, b takes c3, knight 4 takes d5 in this position, because if I don't die on the spot, which I currently don't see how, king g8, uh, I would very much like to make an argument I have more pawns. You do have more pawns. Yeah. Them, them counting skills come in handy again. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm building on my brand, which is... Puns with pawns with Peter Swidler. <laughs> Working title. Yeah. Non okay. non working title. Sound, I, would even, <laughs> I would even go as far as to say non working title. But uh, yeah, I I'm 
I'm a veritable really? bundle of laughs today. Um, as 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 every day. Ninety five is is probably still fine, but I'm I'm curious as to why he decided not to just try and win some material on the spot. It looked attractive to me. I like being being up material in Grunfeld. It doesn't happen very often. Why exactly? Uh, because I blunder stuff. You do? I thought that was one of your strengths that you calculate quickly and accurately. And yeah, play quickly, play play confidently, play for tricks. As the the quote goes. And give Peter a compliment, see? He took that as an offense towards his chess understanding that he calculates <laughs> well. Can't please the man. No, I just, mm. uh, it's uh, it's obviously a, a very upsetting memory. It's not, but I can pretend. Sasha once described my like entire chess chess style as as those four most important rules, and and I can't even count the four because I think it's three. He said the Swidler style of chess is play play quickly, play confidently, play for tricks, uh, and it it kind of stuck. Even even the newer generation of Russian chess players knows this about me now. Is confidence your one defining character trait? <laughs> yeah, you, you know it is, which is why you're asking. <laughs> exactly. Knight A8 played by Duda. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what this is about. I guess he's making the argument that the knight on A4 is so stupid that it will have to go back anyway. But on the other hand, it felt to me like there's really no reason not to get a pair of knights off the board there. Maybe he just wanted to stop bishop a5, yeah. Yeah. Not sure what the Essex chess school says here. I was told, knight on the rim, no bueno. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's probably not as bad as it looks, this position, actually, somehow. Um, but he can't rest to be very, very happy that you know, he's got really zero risk to his position in his kind of cruising. But uh, kudos to Ali Reza for playing the King's Indian. You know, when you need to win a game of chess, uh, play the King's Indian. Don't play the Philidor defense. Well, it's very difficult to play the King's Indian against one and four, though, in Google's defense. No, it's okay. You just go g6, c4, bishop g7, c4. You get very close to playing the king's Indian. You know, you get one e4. This is as close to the king's Indian as you can get. <laughs> it's, 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 I, I don't get why Daniel has chosen this opening to this tournament. It's bizarre because it's just bad. I don't know. This, this looks like a priest. Like a, Sorry? It looks like a king playable, king of Indian ish type position, actually. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just recording some of the game. Possible horrible game against Sergei and another game. And really, I don't really get it. He's not, why he's not going for some active, active lines. If you want lines, if you want to play something combative, play some Sicilian lines. Clearly, this, play this, play this, play play this is a gas no matter. It's a no. I'm not saying it's great objectively, but. Avoiding any, avoiding any trades of pieces and going for a quick battle. I, don't know. Like, I wouldn't play it either. I just think, that, I just think it's very competitive in its own way. Yeah, you know, I, I think we're not questioning the spirit here. We're questioning uh, you know, the, the objective value of, of, of the choice. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, why is it about, worse than the King's Indian? Yeah, it's no, it's not. Yeah, I, I disagree with Lawrence quite, quite, quite significantly. Yeah. It's not, not significant. Anyway. But, yeah. anyway. I can't believe I'm defending the field. I don't like it either. I don't like it either. Um, um, it is. It is. Yeah. I'm not sure. If we would play the Berlin, we, play the Berlin, we also would not be happy. There's no winning for Daniel Dubov. Maybe. maybe. Apart from maybe over the, on the board. Yeah, we, we don't know yeah. that yet. But yeah. Yeah. 
clearly any police warrants because any of the opening premises he would make there to move one or two. No, 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 no. What it's even the directing of Lawrence? I'm trying to figure out how I feel about it. I don't like the Philly door. I don't like the spirit that he keeps trying to innovate, even in the darkest of places, and he's sticking with it. It's not really not a one game thing, either was his Tarash or any of the other things any of the other things he did. So it's always interesting to think about his why this one is to do. Sound? Uh, a, a very weird position. Um, it's, like something, it's, it's like something that Manuel Bosboom is playing at 11 o'clock in the evening with a Cronenberg in his hand. Right side. Right side. Um, um, I don't know what sound, I don't know what sound like apparently. I've lost sound. I've lost sound. That would be cause for concern. That would be cause for concern. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully we are here and live and audible. This is the 10th round, the penultimate round of the qualification stage, the Lindor's Abbey tournament, uh, part of the Magnus Carlsen tour. Uh, some of the firm favourites consolidating their position for the knockout stage, Hikaru Nakamura, Sergei Karyakin. Uh, these guys, if they... Um, if they make any result, I think they're through. They're probably through already. It's really a battle of the middle of the pack. Carlson, Ding, So, Aronian, Grischuk, you and Dubov, and potentially Ali Reza and Duda as well. Um, those guys, long shots, but they need to win. And they've gone with very combative openings. Ali Reza playing the King's Indian. Uh, Jan Chistov Duda playing a Sicilian, but getting... Uh, a well, he's got a very uh, he's got a, a position with a lot of uh, elastic potential. He's kept a lot of pieces on the board, so that's very interesting. And in the other games, uh, where Dingler in against Wesley So looks uh, uh, looks fairly uh, meek when the rooks come off. Um, Carlson playing white against his good friend Daniel Duboff. I mentioned I wasn't a huge fan, fan of Daniel's opening but hang on a second here things have opened up peter this is very exciting e takes d5 
And if we go rook takes d5, which looks like the natural recapture, we don't want to give ourselves an isolated queen's pawn. Magnus is king, very, very open. Um, is Daniel, will Daniel shut me up here and just be right and say that this was a glorious uh, choice? Uh, what does he do after rook takes d5? What is Magnus? Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. It looks very, very interesting from the black side. I suspect white is somehow, white should be able to control it uh, in some way, but uh, yeah, this is this is what black is sort of aiming for in these uh, in these types of types of structures. Just uh, hope to find some tactical opportunity to blow things up in the center. And uh, the h5 h4 pawn sacrifice looks looks very very interesting here. I assume f4 we want to play knight e4. I guess yeah. I not sure. First of all, what's the threat? The threat probably is after so f four ninety four. But do we? Okay, I can understand why ninety four. But we can just go back to d eight, right? I mean, we yeah. No, rook d eight is not is not uh, a bad move either, probably. But I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, create as many uh, as many threats as possible as early as possible. F four played in the meantime, so we'll uh, we'll see soon enough. Also, Daniel is doing a something uh, definitely right in this game in, in staying sort of far above Magnus in terms of uh, clock time 10 against uh, uh, 640 here. So uh, when the critical moment comes and uh, it feels like it should be uh, getting to that time, he, he still has uh, plenty of resources on the clock to calculate properly. Yeah, he's got a, a nice advantage here. Let's... Uh... So after f4, if you play knight e4, there is a very peculiar move I could try there. I don't know if it works. But after f4, knight e4, there is a move knight c3, <laughs> which I currently am trying to figure out whether this is good, bad, or somewhere in between. Uh, could be actually quite important. The, my point being, of course, that if you take on f2, I take on e8 with check, then I pick up the knight on d5, sorry, the rook on d5, which also threatens the queen on black to take on d5. And then we go bishop takes f2. And we have sort of stabilized. Uh, but probably this is not great because black can play something like bishop d7 and take on f4 next move. So I guess it's playable for white, but doesn't really bring any particular joy. Mm. How do we reply to knight e4 then? Just queen f3, maybe? Probably just queen somewhere, yeah, queen f3. Even queen e3 maybe is playable because the rook on e8 is not protected, so there aren't any... Uh, immediate jumps available to black. Very, very sharp position. Very difficult to to assess on the fly. Yeah. Um... Yeah, weird position. Weird position. Also, another weird position. I'm looking at the corner of my eye. Grishchuk versus Ferruja. Let's have a look at that. Yeah. What on earth is going on there? That is, that is like. That is. That, I think that's a very typical bayonet landscape. Frankly, it is uh, typical. But excuse me, where is our light squared bishop? Uh, yeah, well, I know. It gets it gets traded for the knight on e6. That that happens once you play a five. I understand, but this doesn't look overly typical to me it feels like you know somebody who's played the king's indian a lot uh, a much poorer version than what you can normally get because normally you're guaranteed to win this pawn on e6 but after bishop g4 we're not winning a pawn right well i think i think the whole point is he, he's planning to go h5 g5 and uh okay. i guess why just plays f3 though f3? Yeah, this is the problem. Yeah, exactly. just f3 
just F3. And if we never win this pawn, I think we are strategically in big trouble. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it very much hinges on Black being able to remove that uh, remove that pawn from the board because otherwise, his position will be will be you know risky. Would we'll be putting it mildly. Yeah. Uh, I'm also curious why none of this has been played yet by by Sasha. What else is he considering here? I mean, a five B A just to open the and he's he's gone a five. This is this is interesting to me because uh, I wanted to play a five, but I couldn't make it work tactically. I don't I don't really understand what he is planning after B A. And then it's a <laughs> it's a very big question of why we've given up why we've given up the pawn and he just goes bishop g4 afterwards and yeah this is this is very curious to me because uh it felt to me that i guess he feels that he always has bishop g4 h3 but he needed to get a5 ba in and to me it felt like he always has a5 ba and he needed to get bishop g4 h3 first uh so yeah i'm i'm not sure what this is about Jan? I'm here, I'm here. I can see you. I was just wondering because I think you've played the bayonet, so... Um, yeah, I've played it. I fought with the bayonet. Um, looks good for white to me. No, I think you guys said it all. As long as this pawn stays alive, I don't care who has more pawns. This is the dominating factor. It's just where we break through. Not too surprising is that, that probably Grishuk has seen more bayonets or King's Indians. Then Ali Reza, Ali Reza just in a must-win situation, played a sharp opening. But I like it for what? No, it's it still looks very attractive. I'm just uh, I remain unsure on why we needed to include a five ba. Yeah, why not? We, we could have had the same position with uh, with a five being kept in reserve for maybe some knight c six bothered him, and then a five knight a five. He wants mm. to c five. Yeah, maybe, maybe that. Yeah. Yeah, because now knight c6, I guess rook b7 looks very attractive. Even c5, uh, c5 looks very attractive. And yeah, generally these positions end up being very good for white somehow. Yeah. Lawrence, did you hear that basketball star Yanis Antetokounmpo? He could not practice during COVID-19 because he does not have a basketball hoop at his home. I, I didn't hear that, but it doesn't surprise me. I was just thinking, why doesn't he buy a net? God. Okay. I try, I try. If it's a true story, it works. It is a true story. Uh huh. Then it works, then you're good. Mm. Me and Hikaru Nakamura cruising against Jan Krzysztof Duda. Uh, everything has gone wrong for the Polish Grandmaster. Today, um, I don't see him making it. I might have six check. Uh, it looks like he's he's about to get made it somehow. Yeah, I don't see rook, I don't see exactly how rook, yet. Rookie eight, feels... rookie eight, followed by rook takes f eight and queen. Well, I mean, there's a bishop on c six, so ah, oops, Exc right. excitable five, boy. Cd five, bishop b five, bishop c four. That's for yeah, the... no, something like that is likely to happen and and yeah. and likely to just be winning. And and the knight g fives here as well. Hold on. Like the, the the saddest part about this position for black is that white didn't even have to sacrifice anything to get this. Right. All, all this is happening with equal material, so it's a yeah, it's a it's a sad state of affairs here for Duda. Would be would be very surprising if Hikaru somehow doesn't convert this into a full point. This is... uh, so the 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 rich are getting richer kind of uh, kind of story here in terms of the tournament standings. Hikaru didn't really need this, and Duda kind of needed this badly. And um, it's actually, I think, often the case that uh, uh, people forced to play sharper for a win than they normally would. In particular, with the black pieces, they they do lose a decent proportion of those games. Uh, yeah, he... it's it's a tough spot once you have to start spicing it up. Yeah, Duda in trouble now. I would like to go back to the uh, to the Duboff game because one thing that's 
quite apparent if my screen is correct here is that Magnus Carlsen has only two minutes. Is that correct? Yeah, that seems to be that seems to be what my uh, my screen is saying as well. And uh... which is uh, actually quite shocking. Um, this is not an easy position to play for White with on two minutes. Not at all, not at all. And uh, I think a lot of credit has to go to Duba for uh, very uh, convincingly uh, preserving a lot of life in the position and then finding the uh, the way to break it open. And yeah, Knight G1, once you have to start playing moves like Knight G1, you, you have to start worrying for Magnus here uh, quite seriously. Like Knight E6 looks very promising. How is he even replying to Knight E6? I guess bishop g3 is his intention, yeah? No, uh, because rook f1 I thought I could take, but maybe I can't. Maybe maybe there's bishop g3 in the end there. Knight e4 is also very much uh, on the menu. It just looks like this could just be flat out bad. Even something like b7, b6 right now, uh, intending to play bishop f5 first, and then reconsidering where where the knight from c5 has to go is is quite sensible. What's Magnus doing? Is is what is this knight G? What is this stuff? Uh, his knights are weird. Everything is weird. But maybe it just holds. Maybe, maybe <clears throat> it's just okay. But feels as though Dubov has got a serious initiative. Feels yeah, very, this very is, shaky. Yeah, this is a fantastic chance for uh, for Daniel to shake everything up. He improved his situation in the tournament greatly, and also. Will this actually put Magnus at risk or not really? If Magnus so far he's okay, this, but if you lose this one and the last one, things could still still happen. If he loses this, he's in the danger zone. He goes to fifty percent, and uh, on current standings, fifty percent still gets in. But it's yeah, it's going to get shaky, and he plays. An e four uh, played queen e three. He plays Ali Reza with the black pieces in the last round, yeah. Knight e4, queen e3, you can go... I mean, the knight could jump back, or you could support it with bishop f5 here. Both, uh, sure, both five seem okay. so beautiful, no? Like, everything yeah. covered. How is black not just Oof. better here? Black is better, for sure. Questions how much? Okay, bishop f5, you can't move the knight on e2 because f4 falls. So what on earth do you do after bishop f5? I just can't, literally can't see... Uh, a, a, move, a move that improves. Mm -hmm. That's correct. In, in the meantime, the uh, the Aronian Karakian game ended in a very very sharp draw, where kind of both sides made a lot of progress towards their game plan. And uh, Black is getting mated on the king side, but does have the perpetual from the g4 e4 squares. Let's stick with this. Oh, actually, I want to put this on the board very quickly because this A pawn you didn't want to give away is now made it all the way to A2, which I'm not sure. It's a bit of a nuisance, no? no yeah, stuff. also knight G5 yeah. is uh, is a constant source of uh, worry here for white. Although well, it's very much in business. Yeah, it's uh, it's now absolutely anybody's game, and uh, uh, they both still have quite a quite a lot of time compared to what I expected to see. Honestly, I thought. You know, Sasha, Sasha is about to win it. Sasha is about to win it here. If he still has 243 left, maybe he's lost. Maybe he's lost. It's, it's too scary. 95 and then H5. 95 and then H5. H4. H4. You have a, <laughs> you absolutely, absolutely. That's with Knight takes T5. I thought EG. I thought EG. And maybe it doesn't happen. But maybe it doesn't happen. Here. Here. Yeah, the yeah, the U is still alive. The U is still alive. Like is what, what I uh, want to settle on here. I don't know the objective evaluation, but I think Black's moves are uh, a lot easier to, to settle on. Even which pawn you take with here is not is not such an easy decision for white. I think e d five has to be correct. But then yeah, knight g five exists. Uh, even knight g four in all these positions is not out of the question. But probably after e d five, you do go knight g five, bishop g seven. 
And what's the problem? It's here. We're just going to exchange queens and play, and we're just bust out. You're with white or what? This could just you should go CD. CD. Yeah. That doesn't make it better, does it? No. G5. It's also no, F3 like, always. Like, this is how I lose all these games in the Kings Indian. And queen C8, HG. No, I think the intention is just to go uh, GH and force black to take on H3 because that bishop needs to come off the board. Otherwise, it might sort of just die there, uh, being a very, very useless uh, useless piece of wood. Takes, takes, and uh, hope that not that bad, but... Triple looks Harry. Bad. Looks bad. This is... G yeah. takes H3 is not what they were talking about when they said Harry takes... <clears throat> okay, that was weird. Mm. This looks lost for Grishuk. A2 still alive. King open. Bishop yeah. H4, F3, F2. King H8. Checkmate on the G file. Queen C8. This has gone, Too this many has gone off the rails. Yeah, this has gone off the rails at some point. Uh, we don't exactly know where, but yeah, not not what he was playing for somewhere around move 2021. 20, he just goes rook takes A2. Um, takes, takes, queen C8. How is he even... Like, how is he planning not to... Queen a7, maybe? Queen a7, yeah. Queen a7, rook takes c7 is the counterplay he is uh, hoping will bail, bail him out somehow. Still looks lost. He even just covered that idiot. Yeah, yeah. Bishop, oh, bishop d8 just in particular. Made it here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Alexander Grishchuk just not present at the moment. It's just strange to see. It's just not his normal self. And Ali Reza, if he wins this, all of a sudden, from nowhere, has got a legit shot. He'll have white against Magnus in the last round, maybe needing to win. That what brings us to Mr. Magnus. How's he doing? Bishop f3, rook e7, queen c1. Not pretty, but he's obviously fighting. Queen c1, queen b6, bishop h5, gh. Still looks unpleasant, does it not? Yeah, the white pieces just don't make any sense. White is a pawn up, but it, you know that that is not really felt particularly keenly here. And look F one. Yeah, black black doesn't have any immediate breakthroughs, but he is just in control. You can you can start you know improving your pieces somehow. Rook maybe goes to the D file. I don't know. Queen C five, B five might be an idea or something. Uh, it's just so difficult to to figure out where any of uh, any of White's light pieces are going here. Uh, yeah, and as we've talked about in the past, Dubov, first of all, doesn't struggle with self confidence in general, and also he's very used to playing Magnus, as he's played him a lot in training games before the 2018 match, and yeah, does not seem scared. Has beaten him in this Steinitz Blitz tournament they had last weekend. This would be a big one for him. Yeah, absolutely. That would that would go some way, some way towards redeeming, uh, redeeming his tournament. Of course, goes rookie six. I guess he didn't really like the idea of white playing g6 gf, which was a little bit of a threat. I think um, he Magnus, wants to go c5, no, to stop any knight e4 jumps in the future. But after knight f3, how is Magnus planning to react to knight takes g5? Just knight g3 or something? What is he? What's the intention here? Oh wow. I guess knight g3 takes, rook takes, and then f5, and you know, claim that I now have play of my own, but. Right. Yeah, I'm still I'm still taking black, but I think maybe this is a decent practical choice. I guess we play something like queen c5 here, and uh, we don't even have to take on g5, of course. Black can very easily just pass for a move. Mm -hmm. I'll make something useful with his uh, little. Uh, uh, of his life. Drama, baby. So both Dubov and Ali Reza maybe clawing back here with the black pieces after risky opening choices, keeping pieces on the board against two superstars like Carlson and Grishuk. But are we there yet? Knight of three. And uh, it is now really, really sharp time trouble with uh, Magnus uh, down to uh, 40 seconds and Dubov a minute and a half. Queen c5 played. I like take this. Keeping control, yeah. It looks nice. Yeah, I like this uh, this idea. 
there is an option of playing knight e5 and saying if you want that pawn back, you will have to part with your very, very strong bishop on g7. But it also destroys the white king side. Doesn't really look very attractive. I just played rook e1. He's yeah, just trying to make moves quickly that don't lose material. Mm -hmm. Not that he has a lot of time on the clock. Looks very grim. Even just, yeah. as you mentioned, b5 and keep coming. Like, ugh, all these pieces are so dumb. Yeah, I'm also kind of tempted to start calculating, but this is probably how you lose with black. Start calculating something like right. takes h3 and then queen f5 check. But you, you really don't need this. You Yeah, just he, he's never doing that. He's just never. Yeah, it also, I mean, luckily for him, it clearly doesn't work. So he needs to spend like five seconds on it and reject it. If it was halfway working, it would have been a very, very uh, unpleasant piece of uh, piece of bait for for the black player here, which could, you know, s result in him spending a lot of time. Knight f2 is a move, though. Knight f2 definitely is something you might want. It was knight c3. Yeah, I didn't. Thing. I didn't like this because of the knight issue. c3. Ah, knight c3, queen f2 check. Okay, this is this is. Uh, hurts. Magnus goes knight e g1 instantly. Yeah, what? still doing some gymnastics, trying to keep material. Yeah, this this now has to be bad, right? This, yeah, this I, is... I can't believe this this holds. Knight a oh, knight a two. Whoa. What's so the wolf is saying? Okay, I will just win an end game against you. I don't yeah, he wants to take on c two, and if he exchange queens, he wins all the queen side pawns. Queen b two. Yeah, queen, 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 queen c two, c2. queen c two is the intention. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Now, this is genius. Fair enough. Plate. Yeah. Rook six. F yeah, he takes uh, Fe is fine. Also, Queen D two, Rook E six is probably not horrible either. It does look queen extremely. Queen D three, Bishop six. Yeah, Bishop six. Sorry, what did I say? Rook. Ah. Sorry. Yeah, he so yeah, he goes Queen D two. Yeah. Knight E two. Knight E two. Show E six. Knight E two. But still knight equal material. <laughs> is there yeah, a glimmer of hope after Knight E two? Knight C three, I guess. Mm. No, I I think. What? Strictly speaking, he just blundered a piece. He oh, just, he hung a knight. Wow. I cannot believe it. On a minute. On I a cannot minute, believe is. it. Wow. Let's look at the face. Ooh. ooh, ooh. Absolutely Falling back. Seen. What's happening, Magnus? Goodness me, Magnus Carlsen. Wow. I say, I've not seen him play like this in a very long time. It just. Dubov, leaning back, disappearing. Wow. Yeah. In the meantime, Alireza did win that that game against Grishuk. Unsurprisingly, the, the the king side just collapsed for uh, for 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 Sasha, and he basically got mated. Uh, lots of decisive results in this round. Four out of six. Uh, and yeah, the situation now is very very interesting. Is Magnus gonna miss qualification after he started with two out of two against arguably his two biggest rivals? Like that's that yeah, be. That's... Bit of a shocker. That's going to be quite quite something here if, if that happens. He's not he, out, obviously. He's at 50%, but he has to be careful now. He's seventh. He's tight in six till eighth. And if he loses, ninth and tenth are very happy to leapfrog him. So we have a bit of drama at our hands going into the we, last round. We have a Oof. huge amount of drama here because the pairing is what it's all about. Ali Reza with White. If he wins, he pretty much secures his spot, you would think. And he takes Magnus's. Ali Reza's half Magnus's. a point behind Magnus. Ali Reza's White. So And du Dubov is playing Aronian. So if if Ali Reza is winning, Dubov and Aronian can make a draw. If if they are they allowed to watch the games in progress? I guess that's a good question. That's gonna be a tricky one, but I would guess. I don't know. Actually, it's a very, very relevant question. All the yeah. games, of course, at the same time. Yeah. During during the Steinitz, the procedure was you had to share a screen, and on the screen you had to have the Zoom call open and the single, the single Chrome window with your game in it. Uh, and I assume something like that should be in place in pretty much uh, all of these tournaments because. Uh, clearly, the games are being transmitted with very, very little delay, and uh, you, you shouldn't be able to watch your own game. <laughs> uh, and and that will be on the same page as the games of your of your competitors. So, 
you know, opening a tab with the tournament games and only watching your competitors' games is sort of technically possible, but opens uh, opens uh, everybody up to a, a lot of maybe even non-intentional abuse. So I assume it's so not. My best guess is no, but also doesn't matter so much for Duba Varonian. Are they both in with a draw very likely? And then we could have like a bunch of guys shared on 50%. Yeah, I think I think we could have a, a tie of some qualifying and some non-qualifying right. uh, players on on fifty. On fifty. The first tiebreaker was the direct encounter, so oof. a lot of numbers to be crunched. Um, mm. Yeah. So whoever uh, whoever is like the the uh, Firujam Carlson game is clearly. Well, not clearly, but it seems like it's a win and in situation for Ali Reza and not lose and and in situation for Magnus. Yeah, it seems um, fairly clear cut. Um, in, in, one in question could be: Could Magnus draw and still be out if Grisha yeah. wins? But I guess that's if if direct encounter, as you said, if direct encounter is first tiebreak, he has beaten Grishuk in round two. So right um for magnus the the equation is fairly straightforward he has black against Ali Reza and he has to uh to not lose although i'm not sure how it is if there's a well i'm too stupid for these things there could be some triangle situation no i don't know mm -hmm. magnus has beaten grishuk but lost to whoever he lost to um duda who in turn has lost to grishuk and then yeah we need more tie breaks i don't know yeah, but but Still. all in all, all in all, very exciting. Uh, the the Dubov Aronian game. Uh, it would be ideal for us if somebody actually needed to win that, but I don't think that's true. I think they both are extremely likely to be in with a draw. Uh, it feels like the right play, even if it's only like eighty five percent. It's still much better than playing sharply for a win and risk being out. Right? Yeah, of course. Uh, the game, the game still has to be played, and it's a rapid game, and you can't, you know, just secure a draw by by, you know, showing up with the white pieces. But from the tournament situation standpoint, they both uh, they both seem to be uh, expected to uh, to play reasonably safely. Yeah. We should mention there are no draw offers before move forty. Of course, if both players are happy with the draw. There's usually some move repetition or something to be done, but it's never an easy situation if you yeah, know you're good with a draw, but you also know you can't offer one. And how do you play it? Do you play it extra safe? Like what do you do? It's it's a tricky spot as well. Yeah, I think I think the prescribed uh, recipe is just to play normally. Of course, uh, but <laughs> it's easier said than done. Off. Absolutely, yeah. But in particular, I think this applies to opening choices. Yeah. Uh, Choosing something which you know aims to just vacuum everything off the board it has been known to backfire. Just play your normal openings, but keep an eye on continuations, which give you a kind of a very very safe position at some point along the way. All right, we'll be going on a quick break. The games resume, I think, in twenty five minutes. When yeah. yeah, the world champion in a must not lose spot with black. He hasn't been training with black. After losing this game against Daniel Dubov, now he's facing Ali Reza Firuja. And yeah, we have been accused of this whole thing being scripted for more drama. Certainly feels like that after what happened in this round. When we come back, we will tell you, was Magnus completely lost if he does not blunder this night? After knight c3, knight g3 and everything else. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights 
from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Chess is simple. You just make the right moves. Now anyone can learn and improve their chess skills with the world champion, Magnus Carlsen. The Magnus Trainer app is packed with fun mini games and interactive training content, playable anytime, anywhere. Get the Magnus Trainer, available in the App Store and Google Play. E5, it's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against 1E4, based on 1E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique Move Trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshal Gambit against the Spanish, with 3 Knight F6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there. Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on Chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5, Patsers. Let's not just look at openings move by move, but let's try to understand a little something and look at a few typical structures that can arise out of a bunch of main openings. And hopefully understanding these structures and the typical plans and the ideas will help you a little bit in your own practice. Laurent, what structures will we cover? So first of all, we will cover some, one very famous structure, uh, Karlsbad structure, which can arise uh, from the Queen's Gambit mainly, but from other openings as well, like uh, the London system or the Karokan. Yes, uh, so, from childhood memories of the Karlsbad thing. It's important for everyone to understand what's going on here. Yeah, exactly. Then we will have a look at uh, some uh, Rui Lopez, actually, which is a uh, classical line, not the Marshall or the Berlin, but this classical position where White plays D4 and sometimes even uh, goes like the pawn on on d5 or uh, even even sometimes taking on c5 we'll see some nice game of uh, bobby fisher here and some nice cup of game after d5 here you will share your russian upbringing with us you have all the classical education in the real Lopez. some nice examples there hopefully then we move on to the french structure which i don't understand particularly well but this position has always intrigued me. Who's better and why? 
What are the plans? Why can white hope for an advantage? Is a space advantage such a big deal? And the French structure can, of course, arise mainly via the French after moves like knight c3, knight d2, or e5. But we also have a small detour into the Karo camp, which is very similar, but not quite the same. I've always been intrigued by this because the bishop can go out here, bishop f5, and it's of course assist times for for black, but uh, it's not life is not that simple as we will see. And the last topic uh, will be the symmetrical positions, which kind of hides basically uh, from uh, the border, like the French exchange, French or Petrov, I'm showing right now, or even the Berlin, Berlin rookie one, where we will see an uh, unfinished uh, masterpiece from the current world champion Magnus Carlsen. Symmetrical positions here, we mean these positions where either side is missing an e pawn that are very common in today's practice. So, this series is not intending to cover every pawn structure imaginable, but we hope we chose some that are instructive and relevant. And we hope that you'll enjoy it. Maybe even once. Everybody and welcome back to the Lindor's Abbey Rapid Challenge, part of the Magnus Carlsen Tour. It is a fantastic last round we have in store. Uh, we've had an amazing penultimate round just there. Absolute drama. Magnus Carlsen losing with the white pieces against the Philidor after I was slating and slandering this opening choice by Daniel Duboff. He got a great position, came through, beat Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces, meaning we have got uh, an absolutely thrilling last round to look forward to. Hikaru Nakamura is through. Uh, he's on seven out of 10, cruising. Crushed uh, Duda in the last round. He's playing black against Wesley So. Uh, who is also in a great spot on five and a half, pretty much in as well. If he, uh, well, if he makes a draw, he's certainly in. If he loses, I guess he's still in. I haven't done all the maths, but I think Wesley So, Yu Yang Yi, and Ding Lirin on five and a half are in. Sergei Karyakin has also looked very good. He's on sec six and a half in second place. He's pretty much through. For me, the dogfight pretty much, yeah. amongst Dubov on five, Carlson on five, Aronian on five. Ferruja and Grishchuk both on four and a half. It's these five players, in my opinion, this is where all the action is going to take place. Yeah, and in particular, the, the, the value in the last round is, is in the fact that Ali Reza is playing uh, the world champion with the white pieces and 
we assume replaces him in the quarterfinals if he beats uh, if he beats him. Uh, so that's that was always going to be the game we wanted to watch in the last round. Every time they play each other, it's uh, it's the most hype type uh, encounter I think in world chess right now. In particular, when we talk about online. Uh, but with the added uh, with the added uh, tournament situation where Alireza uh, winning uh, with the black pieces against Alexander Grishuk in a previous round, he put himself in a position where a victory over the world champion actually qualifies him you know, most likely uh, for the quarters and also knocks uh, knocks Magnus out, which is something we have not seen uh, very much in um, in recent times. And uh, another game which could be uh, could be very relevant and could be very interesting to watch is Wei Yi with the white pieces against Grishuk. It does feel like those two will be most likely the two games to watch. The game between Dubov and Aronian on paper is uh, is very very important to the final outcome as well. But with both of them, I think mathematically very very likely to qualify with a draw. Uh, you feel like uh, Dubov can just choose something of his opening arsenal which is uh reasonably safe and uh, uh if if Levon obliges i think they could just play uh a correct game of chess where uh if if dubov doesn't really catch Levon out of the opening uh but, draw is a likely outcome sorry to interrupt Peter, but is that so is that true so let's say dubov and aronian do draw they're on five and a half and then uh, Magnus draws and Grishchuk wins. We're actually going to have nine players on on the qualifying score, and then it will go to tie breaks. The, 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 the Grishchuk game is actually a very important game right now. There's two crucial games: the Grishchuk game and the Carlson Ali Reza game. The Carlson Ali Reza game, obviously, the most important. I would guess the correct strategy for the players is you. Take your chances on the five and a half. It's not a given that Grisha wins. Maybe they are smarter than us figuring out their tie breaks already as well. What would happen? Should Grisha win? We will see. Yeah, so massive game actually for for Grishuk. Um Yeah, it's just, there are just a bunch of games. Yeah, I, we have to say Kayak in Ding. I'm not fireworks there, I have to uh, say. Really, really not a bunch. I mean, uh, yeah. Wesley against Hikaru or the Karakin Ding game, nobody in those games really needs much of anything. And uh, yes, if somebody, you know, for, if Ding for some reason thinks that he is in, he is in danger and, and decides to play riskily from the opening and Karakin catches him out of the opening, uh, something could happen there. But in general, I think at least until we see the openings, the, the the two games that we know uh, people will be pushing in uh, pushing in are the the way Grishuk and of course the Ferruja Carlson games. What we do know is if Magnus Carlson loses, it's very very likely he is out of this tournament, which yeah, yeah. would be a bit of a shocker, especially after he had a great first day, starting with three out of four, could arguably have had three and a half points even. It looked like it was just cruising. Yeah. yeah uh, Drama. It's amazing, isn't it? How, uh, you know, even Magnus, when he's not quite in in the gears, he is so often in that it can go downhill so rapidly. He is just, I don't know, today and yesterday feels like... Some... From, from the start of day two, he is yeah. on minus two with one victory. Yeah, that's shocking. And frankly, also his play, and he was, he said so, his play in the Steinitz Blitz tournament, even though he won it with 12 out of 18, he sounded very unhappy and one had the feeling it was not his usual flow for his incredibly high standards. So I thought after day one, where he just played very, very good chess, okay, we have, we have Magnus back. But now maybe he just thought, okay, I'll qualify and then we'll see in the knockout matches what's going on. Now he has a fight at his hands and I'm shocked. Also, this knight e2, knight c3, oh. to hang a piece shows he's not fully present, right? Because if we can bring up this position, if white goes knight g3 here, I don't think it's... 
It's actually certainly not game over, and it's probably not even that bad. Like F5, F6 mm -hmm. is there, the H5 pawn is hanging for now. I think it's the best position he's had in, in, in a number of moves, yeah. I think That's what I'm saying. It looks okay for White, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Knight C3 was, was a game-winning move, as, as it turned out, but it was probably objectively a quote-unquote a mistake. And something like, I don't know, maybe B5 was stronger, just trying to make immediate progress on the queen side. Without I can still move. find here, of course, I don't know, B5 or whatever you do, but now it's just just an unclear yeah. game. And instead, Carlson played bishop f2. The Magnus touch was not there. And hanging a piece, which I have not seen him do very often. Yeah, almost never, actually. I can't recall the last time he blundered a piece. Um, should we quickly go through our predictions for that round? And for the, uh, Sorry, the predictions for this round. I hate to uh, you know, ruin your day, as I so often do, but I absolutely crushed that round, uh, Jan and Pete. I got five out of Wow. No, Jan, you deserve it. I'm not upset. Jan, you got three out of six, and Peter, you got two out of six. Jan, you and I have got 13 points, and Peter has got 10. Wow. Predictions for round 11. Way, Gris, huge. I'm going to continue. Actually, I keep on picking Sasha, and he keeps on not winning. So maybe the way to unjinx him would be to, pay, to, pick a, to take a draw here. Are you taking a draw? Okay, Jan. Which game? Way, Gris took. Grishuk needs to win. Yeah, wait, Grishuk must win. Mm. Zero one. Let's go. All right, I'm going to go one zero. Wei Yi deserves a win. Duda Yu Yang Yi. At least let me let me go last because I need to take something you have not taken. Okay, uh, Yan. Um, interesting one. Duda's out, so I will say draw. Draw. I'm going to go zero one. I'll take the dude. Okay, so versus Naka. Draw. Yeah, draw. I also go draw. Yeah, I have to take. I have to take the draw here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I I know I need to kind of forge ahead, but I can't. I can't afford to stay too far behind by taking obviously no incorrect answers. Ayak and Ding. Draw. Draw. Also taking draw. Yeah, draw. Uh, Dubal Veronian. This draw. is draw for Jan. Okay, let's spice things up. You know what? Come on, Levon. Zero one. Okay, I'll take I'll take Dubov then. I'll take the Dubov and Firuja Carlson. Oof, it's the big one. I'll go zero one. Zero one. Um, I will go draw. I think it's important for me to beat Lawrence, so I will. I, I can't take what Lawrence is taking. I'm taking zero one as well. Oh, you're taking. Oh, uh, no oh, support okay. for Ali Reza. Wow. Okay, there we have it. Thrilling first uh, final round in six minutes' time. Remember, guys, this is all about the heritage of chess, and today is about the Armenian chess miracle, Levon Aronian. Um, who is currently, of course, the greatest Armenian player, one of a whole list of fantastic Armenian players from the 20th century, um, 21st century as well, of course, some young players coming through the ranks. You can read all about the Armenian chess miracle on Chess24. Go to chess24.com slash tour. You'll find a little link in there with a fantastic article talking about uh, the origins of chess in Armenia, why chess is such an important game in Armenia, of course, part of the education system, the president of the country. I don't know if he still is. Peter, you can correct me, but was president of the Chess Federation as well. Uh, I think so at one point, certainly, yeah. Yeah. So huge, huge uh, uh, amount of importance culturally there in Armenia. Get over there. Check it out. And also remember, uh, we've got our... Two years offer for a Chess24 Premium membership, 150 euros off. It's about as good a deal as you'll ever get. Go to uh, the uh, chess chess24.com slash premium. Go uh, and uh, use the code RAPID2020. So you'll save 150 euros. Two years of premium with all the frills. So some big stuff going on there. And just a few more minutes now. 
until this final round. Goodness me. Imagine Magnus was not to make it through to the final uh, eight. Uh, what price you would have got for that after day one, huh, Peter? Um, well, I, mean, I, I, I struggled to, to, to name, name a number there. I think you could get more or less any odds. I think... Yeah. Honestly, like I think if you walked into into a shop and asked for I don't know two hundred to one, they would probably give it to you. <laughs> they would just think it's inconceivable that he crushes day one, looks good, and then he has this kind of. Uh... No, I, I genuinely think you could you could more or less name name your price, um, and uh, he he probably still squeaks in, but. Yeah, not the way he would have envisaged after day one, that's for sure. Have we got any further clarification if Magnus does make a draw, Daniel and Levon make a draw, and there is a decisive result in the Grishchuk game in favour of Alexander, and we have these nine players? Do we have any idea what happens there? Uh... Let me let me right, check. Right, I, uh, direct encounter. Sorry, Satiris did write something. Direct yeah, direct encounter, but we need to uh so it's gonna be a four-way tie between Magnus, Lev, Daniel, and Sasha. Uh it's actually researchable, I guess, if I hang on a second. So Magnus 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 would certainly make it, it seems like, if he yeah, absolutely. yeah, because Magnus has beaten both Sasha and Lev. So Magnus is in. Lev is on 50% in the group. Alireza is on 50%. So Sasha's out. That actually doesn't help. Sasha, does that imply is Sasha out? is mathematically out? Is he out? I guess that, that seems to imply that he is just out, I, I guess, because I don't think he can get above the sixth, ninth tie. And in that tie, he lost to Magnus and he'll. Ah, okay. So he needs. Ali Reza. Uh, he lost to Ali Reza as well. It doesn't help him. Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, hang on. I've I've not counted this right. Hang on a second. Uh, I've counted the wrong people. So Dubuff is in. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it feels like it feels like Sasha's out because Sasha actually lost to the entire group. Sasha lost to Dubuff, lost to Magnus, oh. and he he also lost to Ali Reza. So. Stop uh, losing to everyone, Sasha. So no, no matter how you, no matter how you slice those numbers, it appears that uh, in that four-way tie with only one uh, one player uh, getting knocked out, by by my reckoning, if it is direct encounter, it's quite clearly uh, it's not Sasha, it's not Sasha true. being the you know, the odd way out, uh, odd one out. This is on the assumption that there's a draw in Dubov Veronian. Let's assume there's a decisive result. Then he has a hope. He needs there to be a decisive result in Dubov Veronian. Ah, he he actually needs Dubov to win. win. I, yes. I assume, yeah, to, to 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 leave the tie, to to go exactly. to go further up. So if Dubov wins, Lev loses. Uh, then he ties for sixth, eighth with uh, Magnus, and no, hang on. Dubov goes to six. Uh, he goes to five and a half. Lev goes to four. so he ties with either Firuja. Or Magnus, and he lost to, lost to both of them. No, that's 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 not really very very. No, 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 no. He gets either. in. He gets in because Magnus will be on five, and Lev will be on five, and Feruja and Grishchuk go. Yeah, but he lost to Feruja. But it's top eight. Ah, right? it's uh, ah, okay. Yeah. So he needs it, yeah. In, in case of a decider in, in, in Dubo Faronian, he doesn't care which way it goes, yeah. He, he just goes ties seven, he ties for seventh, eighth, and gets in, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's a good spot. I was spot. I for some reason I, I still thought it was one one so player out in that time. There is a chance. So you, you're saying you're then saying there's a chance, there's a chance, <laughs> yeah. uh, indeed, and um. Remember, guys, there won't be a chess tomorrow. We do have a, a rest day, but, of course, we'll uh, have everything clear by the end of today. Who will go through? 
the round starting in just a few seconds. I, we got to go to Ferruja Carlson, surely. Yeah, That's absolutely. Yeah. The game to go to. So, a bit simplified, but pretty much if Ali Reza wins, he's probably in. If Carlson draws or wins, he's certainly in, right? Yeah, I think so. I think both of them are like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure like whoever gets the desired result in that game is in. We are now discussing outside chances for Alexander to uh, to still still get in somehow. And the games have actually started. Yeah, so let's started. Let's let's get there. Let's watch. Yeah. Um. Yeah, unsurprisingly, in the in the one game we have uh, that progressed reasonably far in the in the Kamura uh, saw game, it seems like players are playing a reasonably well known theoretical line, which, by my reckoning, should just be very very equal. Takes rook f e eight, or I guess yeah, I, I don't know theory. Jan probably even knows exactly how to equalize here, but I assume takes rook f e eight and rook takes e two. What is that to know? <laughs> yeah, draw. Dub of our own Jan is the position after e3, knight b7, c5, knight h5, bishop d3, knight f4, e, f, b6. I'm still assuming that both sides will be okay with the draw here. And this is, if white wants it to be, a very, very solid line for white. Yeah, or we'll it see. could actually be, it could be a very forcing line as well. So the wolf in particular, if Lev goes for the more forcing continuation of the castles, the, there's definitely a great number of very, very concrete lines, which uh, White never runs any risks in whatsoever. All right, let's go to the big one. Ali Reza Firuja, the 16-year-old prodigy who defeated Magnus Carlsen in the Banta Blitz Cup finals this very year with the white pieces. Needs to win if Carlsen draws. He's in, but the shocking thing is if Carlsen loses, he's very likely out of the knockout stage of this tournament. All of this Carlson knows a little something about because he used this with the white pieces against Vichy Anand in their first world championship match. Magnus never got very convincing positions there with white. He's going for this setup. Which, yeah, objectively, I think is fine for black. I think it's also a decent play position for Ali Reza. All the pieces on the board, unbalanced structure. Gonna be, gonna be a fight. Yeah. So D2 was relevant because I think if you start with Bishop G2, E4 is strong. So he had to go for bishop to d2, which is useful, but not always needed. So showing that Ali Reza knows some subtleties here. Knight g7, h4, spirit of the times, h6 to meet h5 with g5, bishop to c3. c3. This is very interesting f6. because you, if, if f6 is actually forced, which uh, oh. is implied here, you start feeling quite happy about things with, with white, or at least on a surface level. But I'm wondering if you can go knight d5 here and uh, play for uh, flop four initiative, giving up that pawn. But probably Magnus doesn't need to. Bishop b5, knight e5. You probably need to take with a c knight. He does yeah, go he's played f6. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it. it's it's that big a deal either. <laughs> like, looks a bit ugly to combine f6 with h6, but still h5 is g5. Not bishop e6, knight f5 mm -hmm. or knight d5. Yeah, absolutely. Two played. Yeah, just play playing uh, quietly here. Bishop d six seems very logical, and then knight d five or knight f five. Uh, the thing is, White also needs to wait with the castling because I think if he castles too early, you might actually start considering going g five with Black and uh, and uh, keeping the king on e eight and giving mate on the king side could be. A I've seen weird things like <clears throat> something like this in these positions, but I'm not sure if White can get it even if he wanted to. No, it looks like Carlson's doing fine, but 
other than the position of the board, the question is also how's his mental makeup after he blundered that piece against Dubov and clearly he did not expect to be in a position where he had to fight for qualification in this very last round. And all the strategizing I was talking about, you want to avoid playing Magnus um, in the first round, sort of goes out the window here. Now maybe yeah. the way to avoid playing Magnus is not winning this qualification stage. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be one for the books where you kind of have to, you know. But I, th I don't think Hikaru can sort of not win it by this point. Also, this from what a... I understood, Magnus has a good tie break. So if he makes it in, he's probably whatever six or something. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I think I think the the first place is kind of safe actually because Magnus Magnus is not finishing eighth if he does if he does get in. And also, let's face it, he has not looked that strong in this tournament thus far. <clears throat> Still, I believe it's always wrong to bet against Magnus, but he has to he has to make it through first. A5 plate, typical move as well, stopping B4. D4 is not possible yet because his knight is hanging. So I don't know what you do. I guess B3 and then move the knight somewhere. But it looks fine for black. Yeah, it is, it is of course, fine. And... Uh... Specifically, g5, g6 is is one of the more dispiriting things about playing knight of three, g3. One moves one and two. Um, yeah, this is what they used to do to keep peace on the board, to play for a win. But d5, g6 is a bit of a blocker. Yeah, because you, you you then have a basically a choice between this this specific position and the symmetrical Grunfeld. And uh, there are some people who will play symmetrical Grunfeld and... and uh, uh, claim uh, claim it's a, it's a fight for advantage, but uh, not everybody is of that opinion. Queen A4 played by Ali Reza. Yeah, that's a better move. Looking for at least some play with Queen to B5. It does get stranded there sometimes, but maybe, maybe you don't have to worry about it just yet. Um... Alirez, I think, is very incentivized to play quite quickly here. Uh, I think what he, from what we've seen, and it just feels very strange to say these things, but from what we've seen uh, of Magnus in this tournament, he just kind of needs to keep the game going. He doesn't need and did not get any advantage, I'm pretty sure. But uh, if there's still a very complicated position with like two minutes left for each, uh, this is where... This is where we've seen anything happen, you know. It's yeah. Also, I don't think Magnus fears Ali Reza in like a strategic battle, but he does certainly respect his his quickness. So it's not exactly like you want to be in a in a bar fight in a sharp position where both sides have a minute. That is the one scenario he wants to avoid. Yeah, knight d4 was arguably a little bit of a threat there, so uh, Ali Reza goes rook fd1 to have king f1 at the end of that variation, uh, which is actually quite important. Otherwise, knight d4 would be a good move here. Um, g3, g4 is sort of never a threat yet, because black, I think, quite happily replies with e4 and f5. Uh, so Magnus has has time to uh, do, something, uh, do something constructive here. Rook f d8 is maybe a move. Knight f5 maybe is a move. I'm also constantly drawn to the idea of playing rook a b8 and creating some kind of a b5 threat. Yeah, but, queen b5. I yeah, but then queen b5. After. Yeah, after queen b5, I can't I can't find any tactical justification for it at all. Yeah, a lot of happening. Magnus trying to regain his cool, his composure after that last game. Usually he's pretty good in these clutch moments, even if he's tilting to force himself to concentrate. Yeah. But of course it affects him. Ali Reza also looks very, very tense there on his gaming chair. And uh, in the other one, uh, Alexander Grishuk played the, the Richter Rouser in a must-win game against uh, uh, Wei Yi. And he got pretty much, I think, exactly what you would like to get from a Richter Rouser. An extremely unclear position with this uh, beautiful pawn center uh, and two bishops against bishop and knight. But you've kind of ruined your kingside position. Don't really want to castle kingside, at least not 
anytime soon and you have to constantly watch for queen h6 ideas to uh to make sure they don't hurt you too much but yeah. you know it's uh, it's about as fighting a position as you can get in the sicilian that's probably game. yeah probably good for white but uh, it's kind of irrelevant very relevant to that game for especially this dubov aronian pairing once they see Grishuk is not going to win, they can pretty happily shake hands. But it looks like... Actually, for, from, from our calculation, the way for Sasha to get in would be for one of them to win in this one. So I think if they if they make a draw, they quite successfully gatekeep, uh, gatekeep mm -hmm. Sasha from qualifying. Right. Which seems likely. It does, it does appear to be quite likely, yeah. Um, for a second there, I thought maybe black could even be slightly better because knight c3, rook b4, you, you, the pawn on d4 is hanging, but knight e2 is very comfortable. One thing we've learned, I think, is if you don't plan a knight c5, it's very hard to be better with black in these structures because mm -hmm. it's always this guy that's a problem. Yeah. All right, back to Mr. Magnus. That Dubov Aronian game, very likely to end peacefully. Dubov, bit of a comeback there. Yeah, very in much so. He, he had a bit of a nightmare first day. Uh, I think he ended up on minus two, and it could have been even worse, maybe. Yep. But uh, yeah, if he if he draws this, which we assume he will, I think he is just in mathematically, which is uh, exactly what you want from the preliminary stage. Yeah. Yeah. He, to he's, he's, yeah. Not really creating any threats just yet, but maybe keeping, you know, slightly more control over the position, stopping knight d4, uh, which could have been something black bear, uh, could, uh, might be interested in. Eventually, maybe you want to play before, but obviously not right now. One thing that you could list as a drawback to this move is that if black continues keeping the rook on a8, uh, once the queen leaves the a4 square, uh, a5, A4 will actually be uh, a little bit of a strategic achievement for black. Uh, keeping the pawns on A3 and B2 restricted. B6 played by Carl. B6 played by Carl. Just move here, just move here, just trying to, trying to keep the tension, keep the tension. Um, uh, yeah. It's a little choice, it's not going to make it so easy for him to play Ruby here for him to want to play Ruby because he doesn't even need to calculate many takes A5. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was going to always return to A8 with this being, but now it's not even a topic. It's not even a topic. When I look at this position, of course, the first position I want to play is H, but I want to play as you probably lose that pawn after g5 that pawn after g5 and the shot. But, but uh... It just creates uh, creates a target in most cases. Like h5, g5, knight e3, you probably can keep it, but... And then we return to that question, uh, Jan, uh, Jan mentioned. Yeah, we're off again because of the sound. We're back. Are we're we back? back. All right. Um. So yeah, the, that structure Jan mentioned uh, very, very early on. H5, G5, Knight E3, aiming to play G3, G4 at the first opportunity. That is maybe still a bit of an option. Or maybe start with Knight E3. I don't know why I'm starting with H5. Um, but I don't know I don't know if it's a good option. It's just something to do. Because I think the biggest problem for white in these structures is just finding something proactive to do. Black's position is extremely solid. And... Uh, just finding a plan of any sort is is priceless here for Ali Reza. And what about a move as obscene as King F1? I mean, for me, the one the, the only plan that really looked sensible was to play D4. Um, yeah, but I don't think you can without preparation because I think allowing E4 and F5 will make 
Black yeah. Explosion. Uh, just very, very good. Was, so you, you, yeah, you. I, I was, I was wondering if there's a position in which I could play e two e four first, and <laughs> then threaten d four on the next move. Oh, that's but nice. it just feels that when you when you telegraph your intentions this much, right. Black will always find a way to to do something about it. Even knight d four here, queen d seven, knight takes f three, and then rook takes d seven, followed by rook a d eight. Just feels like you're never playing d4 after after that. So these are not the times to telegraph your intentions. E3 played. E3. <laughs> well, this looks completely reasonable. Yeah, it's a it's a fine waiting move. It doesn't, but it doesn't weaken anything. It it does create like a bit of a uh, a bit of a hook to play bishop g4 for black because uh, pinning that knight on f3 sometimes is useful, but. Maybe not in this position because rook d2 is a very uh, comfortable reply. I think Magnus could seriously consider just playing rook a b8 uh, and and actually asking White what is he planning to do with that persistent b6 b5 threat. And if White does go queen b5 as we expect, he might. He has a choice of a number of options to trade the queens. I think like rook b8 queen b5 queen d5 for instance, or rook b8 queen b5. Knight a7. Uh, I don't know if it's all that great, but it sort of defines the position, which is something I think that Magnus would like here, just to make sure that you know the the big strategic questions are settled. We've taken the queens off. We want to double on the d file. The knight from a7 goes to b5, uh, fighting against the d4 break and so on. It's not unplayable, but of course you don't have to. You can just play something like bishop 7 in the current position and and feel perfectly happy about life. Um, Played. Rook b back to c2 instead of queen b5, but then black has, for instance, an option of playing a5, a4, and then maybe b6, b5 on the next move, driving the white pieces back. I don't know. It will be interesting to see what, uh, what Alireza thinks about this, because uh, after queen b5, I think he has to expect the queens probably are coming off. Alireza taking his time. Yeah, and... Probably nervous, actually, Alireza. He understands... So why wouldn't he be? Yeah, this is, this is a problem. So he's a right to take his time. He's more than good enough to just spend a short while here to uh, to fix. Is there it. another move than Queen B five though? That's what I'm curious. Queen C two. I mean, it's basically a straight up choice between Queen B five and Queen C two. Yeah. A four. Yeah, exactly. And then we we pretend this is. You not probably just said all that. Yeah, sorry. Dubov Queen C two played. Time has ended in a draw. So that actually means. Yeah. Alexander Grishchuk, I think is I out. think I think it means that uh, Grishchuk is out. Yeah. Yeah. So Nakamura also a draw, of course. Grishchuk still fighting, but probably not with a shot. So that means Alireza wins. Is in. Alireza doesn't win. Carlson is in. That's the situation. We think it's 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 a straight up uh, wow. uh, sh yeah, shootout. Shootout. Yeah, it's a yeah. shootout. Yeah. yeah. Gotta love the good old-fashioned duel. No seconds, no nothing. Yep. A4 played by Carlson in order of to... Uh, yeah, stops B4. Yeah, points. very, very normal move in these types of positions. Yeah, I don't think B5 is a threat yet, but uh, maybe it was because D3 was hanging. So Knight E1 is specifically to have B5, Knight D2, and Black not not picking up the, uh, the pawn on D3. Yeah. Bishop d5, maybe? Bishop d5, logical. Bishop g4, also kind of logical, actually. I, I quite like bishop g4 here, because... Oh, no. Rook d2, b5, you still have knight a5. I thought rook d2, b5 was a nice little trap, but knight a5 is perfectly perfectly fine. Yeah, but, but as mentioned, I think it's just important for Alireza to keep the game going for... For as long as possible, not committing to anything, not giving, uh, not giving Magnus clear targets to, to calculate. 
Uh, pretty sure. Otto London is saying Firuja just complained that Magnus just talked to Norwegian. <laughs> well played, if that is the callback. I'm assuming it is. Yeah. Mm. So what do we do? We start with Bishop G4. We could also think about B5. Yeah, absolutely. B5, mm. I think, forces White to go Knight G2. Yeah. Because Knight A5, I think that those tactics don't work out after Bishop B3, Queen C7. I think we take on G1. And uh, White doesn't actually win the exchange back. But after Knight G2, two. Bishop G4, here White does have Knight GF, GF3, which wasn't the move earlier. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. Yeah. Still looks fine for Black, but yeah. these positions are always very, very, very tricky, actually. Looks looks absolutely perfect for Black, but yeah, if, if at some point you miss some tactic and White gets to play G3, G4, his position could just sort of explode and uh, in a good way, and uh, uh, Black could be in trouble. So yeah, well, still a lot of play left, which is what we like to see. There's a question brought up, what happens if Ding loses and joins a multi-tie? We're not smart enough for multiverses here, but our assumption is. Uh, if Ding loses, uh, but that doesn't change very much, right? Because I don't, I don't think it does. Because he, like the the, the tie just moves up a bit, uh, a line. They they tie for fifth instead of for sixth. But I think Rishuk has still has an abysmal score against uh, the, yeah. the entire the entire lineup. Difference. Also, he's a lot. You know, he, he's not better, but it, he's doing fine here. You would assume so. I just, I, I don't even see him losing that game. G five played. And... Where's Ali Reza? Yeah, Magnus in the tank here. Uh... Mm -hmm. The good news is that there's a lot of tension on the board. Hello, oh, Magnus. In order to help us in our mission to protect and conserve one of Scotland's most important heritage sites and the traditions established here over 800 years ago, you have to make the knockout phase. Why exactly? You don't think the sponsors would be happy to have Magnus in the knockout phase? Yeah, I'm... I'm only slightly tongue and chicken. Like my question was, sponsors probably would also be quite happy with Ali Reza in the in the quarterfinals. And unfortunately, you of course they're all great players, blah blah blah. But still, Magnus. Yeah, I. You are taking this a little bit too seriously. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Bishop G four plate. Yeah, this move is a disturbance idea. Uh, yeah, because uh, obviously the knight from d2 would want to go to e4 and c5, not to f3, which is why uh, Black is doing what he's doing here, uh, using this specific moment to disrupt the uh, knight, c2, d, uh, knight c4, d2, e4, c5 maneuver. Knight g3 played, and Magnus just goes bishop e6 back. Magnus is very well aware of the math, uh, math of, the, of the situation. Mm. Says, would you like to play knight g2 here, young young sir? <laughs> mm. So finally answering the question, do you even math, bro? It does math. So Ali Reza is going to have to turn down that polite invitation. Play some move like queen e2. Queen e2, I assume. Queen b1 looks worse. Yeah, of the of the two squares to avoid the. Uh, the skewer from he goes queen b1 instantly. Yeah, what do we know? I'm not quite sure why, to be honest. Uh, bishop b3, rook g2, and then Magnus probably goes knight g5 and just picks the picks up that bishop on c3. Queen b1 played, bishop b3, making sure the rook has to go here so the knight can't. Yeah, Ali Reza saying math is overrated. Rook d2, where. Do you go then, knight d5? I was, I was, knight d5, d4, though. That's actually sort of a, he goes knight ah, c2. Ah, he goes knight c2. Okay. 
keeping. Yeah, I was wondering why there was a pause, and I realized there's a second legal move in the position which doesn't mm-hmm. blunder the exchange. So Alireza wants to go knight g2 and then g4, pretty much, I think. Um, yeah, it's it's actually, despite not much seemingly happening, maybe to the untrained eye, it's becoming very sharp because uh, this is a lot of drama. Yeah, it, it it looks like in the in the next few moves there will be a some kind of a tactical uh, tactical clarification, and either white will achieve something or black will be completely risk-free for the rest of the game. Also, can you imagine how tough this is for Anish Giri? He must have a tweet in the draft folder for every possible <laughs> outcome. And he doesn't have that much time to go through all these and then to draft them like Anish is working overtime. Greetings, Anish, if you're watching. Yeah. Or maybe... Well, maybe. Queen E6, Knight G2. I thought this one was impossible because of Bishop A2. This is very wow. interesting. Wow, wow, wow. Bishop A2 and then Rook takes well, well, D3. I thought I thought what? that was winning winning the pawn. Maybe there's some knight e4 there and knight c5 and you Yeah, I couldn't make anything work here, but Alireza, I don't think he, he misses this. Maybe knight b4. Takes bishop takes and now c7 is hanging. Nah. Uh, why? Maybe, it's a maybe. Little, little yeah, things could yeah, happen. Maybe. Yeah. maybe. Okay. Magnus could also opt before to play bishop d5 first here, uh, hoping to. But why would you allow knight e4? That that doesn't feel right. There you could actually start making a, a, a very valid argument for it being better. Like bishop d5, knight e4, knight c5, next move. Uh, no, this is now this is now very sharp. One thing I would like, if I were to nominate an improvement to this. I would say I would like for them to have less time. <laughs> wow. I think they have a little bit what too much time. Okay. <laughs> they have a little bit too much time for my liking here. <laughs> They're still allowed to think, which is uh, borderline illegal. But <clears throat> apart from that, this is a perfect position for this game. Wow. So exciting for me. Oof. 92. What do you do? You could also go bishop d5 or bishop a1, queen a1, bishop d5. Probably bishop d5 immediately. Yeah, yeah he that's goes bishop he, d5. That's what he's played. After knight After e4, e4, I think he's intending to play a play f5, knight c5, queen f7. Or maybe the e4 c5. we go here. This is a much improved mm-hmm. version. Yeah, this is a hugely improved version, of course, for black. You know, with the bishop uh, with the bishop dead on uh, on g2. A good spot not to go for this Trojan porn on d3. Might be possible, but way too messy. Yeah. So the two most obvious options for black here, for white here, are ninety four and d four. But there could be others. There's maybe some argument for d four, but I don't think. No, I don't think so. I think that's a bit too much. Ninety four played, and I would really like for Magnus to play f five straight away because I think if you allow knight b four here, you are just genuinely war. So he goes f5 straight. He understands that. Yeah. f5 played, horsey, queenie. Probably queen d6, yeah. Probably queen d6. No, queen f7 played. Yeah, I, I like queen d6 better because I thought it's, it, it forces matters more. Here, once again, if we go e4. I guess still bishop a2. Queen a1. And just f4, yeah. And uh, Bonzi, yeah. Still, but this is I don't know who uh, night before here. Are we are we sure we're not worse? We're not sure. This is very, very sharp. Maybe. Yeah. Black probably retains uh retains enough control, but yeah, I I don't know. E4 played, yeah. We we expect bishop a2 and f4 played post haste. Let's see, Magnus's oh, face. Hang on a second, there's g takes f4 there. Whoa. Bishop a2, queen, queen a1, f4, G, gf wins not one pawn, but probably all of the pawns in the center. <laughs> um, yeah, bishop g7 and then b3 discovered. Check. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Okay, can't go f4 then. 
Or maybe mm. maybe we still can, so but it's, should be three it, or what it feels like it's a sacrifice at least. Not what you want in this particular situation. No. This is spicing up. Might still be fine though. Because the queen in the corner, he goes F. He just he just took, yeah. Interesting. Not I think not the, what you want strategically. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's it's like third choice strategically, but I guess he feels he has to. Maybe bishop a2 and knight d4 now? But you're running tremendous strategic risks there. D like e played. Bishop a2, queen a1, I assume, will be played. No, this is now... Yeah, and he just bishop goes back c4. to c4. Knight I think, d3, horsey. I think black is just busted strategically. Like, takes on d8 and rook d1. I mean, we can even switch to quote-unquote slow play. Busted is strong, no? Why is Maybe it so bad? bad? A bit strong, but well, I mean, the knights only seven and c6 are. I mean, maybe you can go Horsey? 94 though. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can go 94. I thought this was tactically impossible, but maybe it is. Yeah, sorry. Okay, what, what else is there? Knight e3. I assume Magnus wants to go 94 here because otherwise. Why would he go for this position at all? Show us, Mr. Magnus. 93 played. Yeah, you, you, if it's and not 94, yeah, I don't quite like know what he wants. Yeah, And uh, 92 is a very strong threat. So it feels like Alireza probably wants to take twice and then play something like Queen A2 maybe. Oof. This pawn is good though. Even c3, yeah. Black is fine. This pawn is too strong. I don't know. Take on f7, take on c3, take on a. No, take on a4. I can. Yeah, I take on d8 and I take on a4. I worry about nothing with such a c pawn unless you take it instantly. That well, the problem is, I don't mind. think it survives. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't be arguing against that, but I don't think it's alive. I think it's gone. <laughs> Maybe you make a draw after yell after and then bishop d4, knight d1, and c5, but you are yeah, too it's down. Not what I want. You are too down. And but on the other hand, I have uh, I suspect Magnus might not have anything better after queen a2. And bishop a3 bishop a3, three a3, three. whoa, that's even sharper. Threatening bishop e6, so we stop it. Something here, <laughs> yeah, rook d6, and I guess now queen a2 is the intention. And it's an improved version because after c3 now bishop e6 will mm. actually maybe it's time for the big blocker. Whoa, that is a beautiful, beautiful move. I'm not sure if it's any good, but it looks cool. I think it's the very queen good. Queen is sort of an idiot. Yeah. And then d3 bishop d4. It's beautiful. That is a stunning resource. I think black is winning. Bishop d4, knight c6, c5. This is gorgeous. Queen, queen a2 played. on the board. Let's see. That'd be stylish. Yeah, rook b3 instantly. Rook b3 blitzed, blitzed out, yeah? Yeah. Still can play a bit, that kid. Yeah, I'm not shocked by Oof. We're not shocked by this at all. And if he ends up winning this game with this move, rook b3, I think this will bring at least some of the mojo back. Yeah, I think his, as we say in the business, his juju will be back in business. Shout out to juju44. Mm, rook b3. Let's see if Ali Reza finds a way to mix it. Because yeah, this looks horrible. Now the queen is so far away from, yeah. from contention, really. Wow. Yeah, you start climbing back, like you go rook d2, rook e1, queen d1, and you hope you're still alive at the end of it. But I I don't think you have any conviction that you are. Oof. An unenviable position for sure. Well, yeah, I think I think White Alireza is now sitting there thinking, "What can I do that is not knight takes b three? Please give me a move I can make, which is something else." Knight takes a four would actually be a a decent shot, but I think you just get mated on the king side somehow, like d three. Yeah, yeah, d three bishop d four just happens too quickly for. 
should the also explain king. with opposite color bishops attacking is sort of important and it looks like here white is no longer the side playing for initiative after his options gone yeah bishop d4 looks huge Oof. A lot of drama, Carlson versus Ali Reza these days. Ali Reza, incredibly focused, but he is in a tough spot because time is also running out now. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is now, this is just, just bad now. And uh, in other news, Grishuk is much better against Wei, just briefly while Ali Reza is thinking. But sadly for him, it appears as if it will not matter. Yeah, knight takes a four. Okay, see, but what 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 else do you do? I understand how you you come to this conclusion. Okay. I think it's a it's a very reasonable move to settle on because you need to do something, and knight b three is just it feels unplayable. Yeah, and a four well has been played. And Choices? Yeah, I mean, d3 is very strong, but I expect something like bishop b5 might also be quite decent. But yeah, how, how, how do you not play d3 in this position? Especially with draw in hand. I'm sure this is winning, but mm, we always have a perpetual here somehow, don't we? Queen uh. takes g3, yeah. I, I suspect we're winning, but. Yeah, but we're not losing. That's for Exactly, sure. yeah. We know we're not losing. Yeah, that's. Uh, As the old adage goes, first first you find a draw and then you start looking for a win. And uh, you don't you don't have to look very hard here for a draw. They only taught me the first half of that. <laughs> Knight c5 played, and yeah, I think Magnus just goes for this and then checks if he has something stronger. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Knight c5, bishop t4. Looks like Magnus going to make it to the knockout stage, but... Oh. Wow, wow, gave wow. A... Gave himself a bit of a sweat there. Knight b3, queen f2 on the board, king h1. Also likely to be played. Yeah. Some queen quiet move like bishop e 5 feels good, but queen takes you. Why, why would you, why would you bother? Why mess around here. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, this does look winning. It looks like when knight takes d4 has to be played, then we collect everything with checks and, and proceed from there. Rook uh, he, went rook, played. he went rook d2. I did not see that move, but I don't think it's great. We can take and give a check now. Like, yeah, it looks yeah. fairly hopeless. Check played, rook g2. I mean, she takes b3 take even, even, even is winning now, but you could also go something mm. like rook f6. No, rook f6, the, the bishop is hanging. Something like, I don't know, bishop b3. It, it, well, we, there is rook a, queen h3 followed by queen f3, just for the record, if he wants yeah, to I be a cynic. I don't, think, I don't think he does it from this position. The position is just so utterly winning and, and so completely risk-free regardless of what he does. I, no. I, I, I'm betting on bishop b3. I think bishop b3 is a good move. Or bishop here. Or bishop b5, yeah. Bishop b5 maybe is even stronger. Magnus, what's going to be? Bishop or queen h3? Also, honestly, like queen takes e4 is completely winning as well. So, like, maybe Magnus. A... Oh, he went cb. Yeah. Also, also not a mistake. Just, mm -hmm. just collect the material and. The draw doesn't really want run away. Probably neither does the win, frankly. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's just yeah. Rook c7 is made in two. Queen after f1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. Different ways. Yeah, that, that's also fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Queen D one played. Play, yeah. Queen takes E four, or regardless, like it's the position is just winning with pretty much any move that doesn't blunder a heavy piece. So yeah. now you can even invite everyone to the party, like Jules taught us in his books. Shout out. I think it's uh, I think it's time for Ali Reza to resign here, basically. Yeah. Well, I 
Well, I mean, it doesn't make a difference, I guess, but I mean, it's just... Historic moment. Peter's going to argue against resigning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. Mark that day in your calendars, people. Peter Svitler says, no, don't resign. No game has ever been saved by resigning. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, I was wondering, it's also something that Greg Shahadi is bringing up in the chat. Maybe Magnus is doing the math now, thinking... If I win, I might play that guy. And if I draw, I might play that guy. No, no. I think what Magnus is thinking is I need to beat up on this kid whenever I can because I will that be playing time. this kid. I will be playing this kid for years and years. And uh, I'm not I'm not in the, in, in the business of offering him draws and completely winning positions. Yeah, also, you want to get into their heads early. D2 played. No, just bishop g5, knighty. Uh, no, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I would win this. Rook d4. How do you just, I know, I know you win this, but how do you just convert here very quickly? <laughs> Looks I like mean, any rook move. No, like rook yeah. d4 I liked. Rook d4, oh. rook d4. Rook c6, rook c6 is not a mistake. H5, I mean, anything. Bishop g5 is fine. Is, is, yeah. I don't think you can make a mistake as such. Wow. Okay. Challenge yeah. accepted. <laughs> what have I done? Oh my God, I opened the portal. Now, <laughs> now the, the, things, the things will pour in from the, from the neverwhere. Bye. A5, rook A4, and this is probably where you resign, yeah. And he does resign. Magnus Carlsen makes it to the knockout phase. And we still have two games ongoing, so let's jump there. Jan Krzysztof Duda no longer has a shot to make the knockout, but it could still matter. I'm not smart enough. If Jan Shishtov wins, what does that mean for you, Yangji? Let me check. And he'd be on 50%. And once again, it's a tie breaky situation. But Yangji has a decent result against, uh, against the quote unquote tail. So I think he is okay regardless. Right. He's also probably not losing. Yeah, I don't think he is. Although, I mean, that pin along the g-file actually is kind of awkward. We we don't know that for sure. Bishop b2 now. He might actually be close to lost. <clears throat> or knight of three. I don't know why uh, why young Shishto started with knight of three, but it's it's a similar idea. Gf bishop b2, I assume. Hmm. Uh, and right. Krishuk won. Yeah, Might Krishuk not did be win. enough, but yeah. kudos to him. I, I like my predictions thus far, but he probably won't make it to the knockout stage. Yeah. Uh... And it it feels like I actually, if that's if that's the the outcome, I actually somehow got three out of four right in my in my official fantasy for people eliminated before the quarters. Wow. Which is by my standards and, and well, knight of five. That is beautiful in the in the Duda game. Wow. Okay. Beauty. That 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 takes all of that off the table Playing because rook, the spoiler. Yeah, rook d5, rook e2 check, and then knight takes g3 mate to any king. Oof. That is oh quite beautiful. that is quite nice. That's yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, nicely, nicely spotted by by Yu Yangi, who is now back to probably just better. So yeah, that, that storyline. What Actually, a knight... move, knight f5. Yeah. Sadly for me, I saw it, and I wanted to play rook takes d5, knight e3 check. <laughs> yeah, that's what I also thought about, but it's less good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit less good than mate into his checks, yeah. Giving giving the, the mother of all forks here is not the best move. Hmm. Yeah, well, the other games ended peacefully. So, 
Yu Yang Yi, probably in no matter what, but not losing this game either. And Jan Shishtov Duda will always remember having defeated the world champion of chess, Magnus Carlsen, in this event, but had a rough day. Um, I hate to point this out to you. You're on five out of five so far for your predictions. Oof. This round, but this one is going to... Wait, is he screwed it? What is Yu Yang Yi doing? Did he screw it up? He completely destroyed his position, yeah. Wow, what yeah. happened? Did he do it? He, he blundered an 5 check. Ooh, oops. And now I don't know if he has a draw, because this knight on b2 look, is looking a bit forlorn. Probably he still has a draw, but yeah, it's a... Uh... I, I had 0-1, right, in this game? No, you have a draw. Ooh, yeah. I have a draw, okay. But is it a draw? I once trapped a knight on, on g2 like this. Then I went to pick it up. Good times. <laughs> Good times indeed. Do you have to rush in the king or via c5, b4, or what, what do you do here? It's being confirmed that Grishuk is out. That's a pity for his many fans. I hope at least we'll have him on the program then. Yeah, it looks like black is probably still reasonably in control because you, you, you cannot really abandon the pawn on f4 and black gets too much counterplay on the other side. In the meantime, let me tell you who's in. Nakamura, Kayakin, Carlsen, Ding Liren, Wesley So, Levon Aronia, Yu Yang Yi, and Daniel Dubov. Those are our quarterfinalists. Indeed. Mm. It's going to be good fun. It's going to be a day off, of course, tomorrow. Uh, we're going to wait out for the rest, except for the end of this game. To uh... Let me try to figure out. The pairings. Can I, I don't even math, so I might be wrong about this. Let me guess. Try to guess the knockout pairings. Okay, let's One see. versus eight would be Nakamura Aronian. That's not a bad pairing. Mm. Hang on, is that true? No, that's not true. That was before the round. See, that's why it actually depends on this U result because if he draws, he yeah. goes into sixth. There's really no point, right? Because actually, his result matters here. Poor Grishuk. Yeah. yeah. He just wasn't at the races for the entire tournament, hasn't been actually for the past. Yeah, still he scored fifty percent. All the other fifty percent boys are in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do we have a guest on our little program? We are welcoming the world champion of chess, Magnus Carlsen. Magnus, I don't know what to say. Congratulations for qualifying. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> Quite some drama today, huh? Yeah. Uh, I mean, after the first two rounds, it was pretty much total shit show on, on my part. Um, but yeah, you know, I pulled through, so I shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't complain. And, uh, now, now obviously, um, Obviously, we all start from uh, from scratch. How do you do it after you blundered that night against Dubov? You must have been steaming. Do you give yourself a little speech? Do you go to the bathroom, pour water on your face? What What do you do to focus on the next game? Um, I mean, I was so was so pissed. Like, it was a very good performance by Daniel. So I lost quite deservedly, but like. Playing so so poorly for so many games in a row had had uh, yeah it had pretty, tilted me pretty heavily um, at that point. The last game against Ali Reza were things under control all the way. Were you worried at any points? 
No, it was kind of a difficult position to play because I feel like I'm, I'm slightly better most of the way, but it's the sort of position where you cannot force a draw. Um, so we sort of just, you know, went around for a bit and then, um, yeah, I was, thr I was thrilled to see this bishop c d4 and knight c4 because I knew I would have rook b3 later on and then, um, first of all, it looks pretty good and I, I, I at the very least get a serious initiative and secondly, like, the game is, is forced so I don't have to, like, wonder about you know moving around anymore the, the game is pretty much going to be decided very soon and that was very good for for my mood and uh clearly it helped that the position is probably winning at this point as well yeah um, have you had a chance to look at the final scores the other qualifiers all right um I mean, I suppose if you young me, you makes a draw. Uh, it has it has been drawn by this point, yeah. It has been drawn, so then that's going to make my seating quite a bit worse, since he beat me in our mutual game. Um, so basically, he's plus one against. I I don't know if you do all mutual results. I guess so. That's our understanding, yeah. So uh, according to our cross table. Uh, that seems wrong because I think you are actually in that group of four people. Your result, I think, is actually the worst. Um, well, I think Dane also has minus one against that group, no? I think on, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, he you lost to Dane group. and he made the draw, and then I don't know what the, the type, I don't know what the tie break is between you two. It seems like you finish fifth and Wesley so finishes fourth. So you would play oh, Wesley. Um, Nakamura first, he would play Aronian. Kayakin in second would play Dubov. Yu Yang Yi third against Ding. Yeah, this is the tentative pairing as we have it on the website. <clears throat> oh, and, I get, and I get Wesley, huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. So, and I think we're going to get clarification of this. Uh, give us one minute here. I believe we're going to. Be no, I, 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 I'm pretty sure this is correct, and it's also what Chess Results says. And Chess Results generally can be trusted on these things. Matt Peter confirms it. <clears throat> Magnus, anything else going on? Rest day tomorrow. What are you up to? Yeah, I'm. I'm getting the second uh, second quarterfinal, so I have two rest days. All right. Okay. Uh, hopefully, you know the weather is going to be okay, and uh, will will give me some time to um, to uh, hike in the fjords. Sorry. Hike in the fjords, swim in the sea. Uh, yeah, you know that sort of Sam. sort of thing. Sounds what's what's the plan for the hair? The hair keeps growing. I mean, stop bugging me about the hair. The hair is not. All right. <laughs> All right, Magnus. Look, go and rest up. Congratulations. Okay, so, uh, I mean, we're gonna get confirmation at some point anyway. So we'll, we'll send you an email. Yeah, sure. All right. Yes. Uh, well done on uh, on uh, gritting your teeth as you have to do. And finding a way, yeah, yeah, in in the midst of a mini crisis. That's why he's the best, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, because even in those times when things are looking dodgy, he manages to find a way through. So Magnus Carlsen goes through. Will play Wesley. So, and here are the final standings. As you can see, Hikari Nakamura very very impressive. Have to say it. On seven and a half points, he's been sublime so far. Hasn't been in danger, pretty much. Sergei Kayakin, also very controlled performance. Finishing in second, Yu Yang Yi, Wesley So, Magnus, and Ding, all on six points. And Daniel Dubov and Levon qualifying. Unfortunately, Alexander Grishchuk, the worst uh, tiebreak, means he is out, along with Feruja, Jan Chistov Duda, and Wei Yu, who don't make the cut. Um, going to be an absolutely glorious 
knockout phase. Can't wait. It's going to be tons of chess, tons of emotion, as always. But Magnus Carlsen is there. How does he do it? How does he always manage to squeeze in to keep his nerve after blundering a piece and being in a tough position? Um, it's, it's something to behold. Uh, it really is. And uh, remember, guys, go to chessmanfall.com slash premium. Two years premium membership. You want to play Magnus Carlsen in the game of chess? You can do that. Go premium. Use the code RAPID2020. You get effectively €150 discount, which is insane. And uh, remember to check out as well. It's all about the heritage. Uh, This tournament celebrating heritage across the globe. Today is all about Armenian heritage. Um, Get yourself to chess24.com slash tour where you can learn a lot more about that as you can see on the graphic. We done. Ah, oh, here it is. Confirmation. Nakamura Ronian, Carlson So, Yu Yang Yi, Ding Lirin, and Duboff Karyakin. Those are the quarterfinals. We will be back. I, if uh, Magnus said he's got the double rest day, so it will be the uh, Nakamura Ronian and Duboff Karyakin. Is that right? In the first Who's, who's up first is what I'm trying to say. Do who's we, up first? Yeah, who's up first in the first quarterfinal? Is it, is it Nakamura against Aronian the day after tomorrow? We'll get confirmation. Oh, we don't know yet. Okay, we'll get confirmation on that. Keep your eyes peeled, but these are the quarterfinals. We do have a rest day tomorrow. That is certain. We'll be back on Saturday for all the action. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, it's been a blast, as always. Tons of action, tons of drama. Magnus Carlsen, though, does make it by the skin of his teeth. We'll be back on Saturday. Thanks very much, guys. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Chess is simple. You just make the right moves. Now anyone can learn and improve their chess skills with the world champion, Magnus Carlsen. The Magnus Trainer app is packed with fun mini games and interactive training content. Playable anytime, anywhere. Get the Magnus Trainer, available in the App Store and Google Play.
E5. It's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against one E4, based on one E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique move trainer technology. The backbone is the martial gambit against the Spanish, with three knight f6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there, Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5, Patsers. Let's not just look at openings move by move, but let's try to understand a little something and look at a few typical structures that can arise out of a bunch of main openings. And hopefully understanding these structures and the typical plans and the ideas will help you a little bit in your own practice. Laurent, what structures will we cover? So first of all, we will cover some, one very famous structure, uh, Karlsbad structure, which can arise uh, from the Queen's Gambit mainly, but from other openings as well, like uh, the London system or the Karokan. Yes, a so, fond child of memories of the Karlsbad Thank you. It's important for everyone to understand what's going on here. Yeah, exactly. Then we'll have a look at uh, some uh, Rui Lopez, actually, which is a classical line, not the Marshall or the Berlin, but this classical position where White plays D4 and sometimes even uh, goes like upon on on d5 or uh, even even sometimes taking on c5 we'll see some nice game of uh, bobby fisher here and some nice cup of game after d5 here you will share your russian upbringing with us you have all the classical education in the real Lopez. some nice examples there hopefully then we move on to the french structure which i don't understand particularly well but this position has always intrigued me. Who's better and why? What are the plans? Why can white hope for an advantage? Is a space advantage such a big deal? And the French structure can, of course, arise mainly via the French after moves like knight c3, knight d2, or e5. But we also have a small detour into the caro camp, which is very similar, but not quite the same. I've always been intrigued by this because the bishop can go out here, bishop f5, and it's of course assist trumps for for black, but uh, it's not life is not that simple as we will see. And the last topic uh, will be the symmetrical positions, which kind of arise basically uh, from uh, different move order like French exchange French or Petrov, which I'm showing right now, or even the Berlin Berlin rookie one, where we will see an uh, unfinished uh, masterpiece from the current world champion Magnus Carlsen. Symmetrical positions here, we mean these positions where either side is missing an e pawn that are very common in today's practice. So, this series is not intending to cover every pawn structure imaginable, but we hope we chose some that are instructive and relevant. And we hope that you'll enjoy it. Maybe you can learn something.